Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lore Week. Except totally not. The monitor is wrong. Oh, let's fix that. There we go. Much better. So I'm uh, fighting off something, right? So I wake up, alarm goes off, and I'm just like, Bleh. I blew my way through my morning, I blew my way through my exercises, I blew my way through my paperwork. Got everything set up for the stream, I'm all ready to go. And everything's cool, and I'm like, alright. And I pause, like, am I ready to hit stream? Because it's a little early. It's a little before the, the start time, and I'm like, that's weird. I feel like a, oh right, I should probably have breakfast. Cause I hadn't had breakfast. So, anyways, that's why I'm late. <laughs> In addition to your new ensemble, we have raiments and weaponry for every need. So please feel free to browse our store. <laughs> Yay! I can get gear now. Ooh. Where's my inventory? What are we looking at? What are we looking at? I have so much crap! You know what? Hang on, hang on. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of all this crap. I'm gonna eat this cod, and this coconut powder, and this coconut chowder, and this coconut chowder, and this guy's just... I'm just gonna eat it all. Nom, 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 nom. You know, can I do this? Ah, oh, looks like I can't. Hang on, hang on. I need a vendor. I need a vendor of any kind. I'm sick of all this goddamn food in my inventory. Get out of my inventory. Wasting space. Go away. Maybe I could eat my way through it, but Jesus Christ. Thank you, Blade Travel, for the sub. Very much, as always. And I will go ahead and put that down. Yeah, that's, that's how you become a marble. I'll put that down for 6.2. Give me a moment. Point two. Done. Thank you. Alright, yeah, sword. Actually, hang on. Well, just while we're here, while we're here, one more thing. Just let's just sort this all out. <laughs> Go sell this for like. Is this worth anything? Uh, sure. Sell it for like. Price. Half price again. Just keep selling stuff for half price. Because I do need a little bit of money. I need to get that house on the moon, after all. That's one of them. Be gone! Also, what the heck is expanded inventory? Ah! What? 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 Oh, okay. I'll put that in the pile with the other Archon loaves, which... I'm going to use to make my house someday. Oh! I, I mean, I guess I could, I just, I don't care. It doesn't really change much the way I do my inventory, so... So, if that's what you're talking about, then yeah. Alright, so, tank, please! Hey, look, I can get all sorts of stuff. Uh, but what I really want is that... Allegiance. 
the rest can wait. But there will be so much else. That should be everything. Yes. Let's just discard this. Get out of here. There it is. Obviously, I'm leaving that one. <laughs> and get rid of that. Do the rest later. Of course, it's nighttime. Why do all the gunbreaker things have like a head thing? You ever notice that? Like the, the one of them has a uh, the sunglasses. One of them has the eye patch. This one is an eye patch. Hey, look! I can dye my gear. Yes, please. You know me, black and white. <laughs> the gun blades, uh, I mean, it's okay, I guess. In fact, actually, no, I don't like it. I've already decided. It's gone. It's junk. It's total junk. There we go. Better. Let me go ahead and grab this quest. Realize you've got lots to do to. I won't keep you any longer. I do hope you find a moment for yourself and the others as well. They said they were returning to the Valdesian Annex, though I doubt they have stayed for long. I suggest speaking with Kryal first. I'm sure they would have told her their plans. There we go. Um, Zero is a dawn, are they? Nope. Okay, cool. In that case, let's go over here. Say hi to Sorabon. Hi, Sorabon. Not right now, so it's there. I would kind of like to finish the MSQ today. It would be convenient. That way I could stab Zero over there. Alright, now that I'm away from Zero, and Zero will never catch up to me. <laughs> What's going on, Crow? No, okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do the picture thing. I'm already delayed, so whatever. Where do you want me, Zira? Yes, I know you have the gunblade I will never have. Battle pose? Uh... This? Oh, you're right, I did have that one. Sorry. The one I want is the one I'll never have. Is this B stance? Man, I don't know. I don't know nothing. I'll just stand here for a minute. Get some hydration. I've been told that... Well, Zero's already taken a picture, but whatever. Okay. But then that happens. So how about that Kingdom Hearts, am I right?
I mean, Kingdom Hearts 4 looks like Kingdom Hearts 3 plus 1, so I'm okay with that. The mobile game, actually, I'm legitimately at negative interest on. Which isn't exactly new for me. So that's whatever. They will see what they do with it. I was actually mentioning that, and I decided not to talk about it because I was already late. But, um... One thing that kind of irritates me, to be as blunt about it as I can, is how much of an industry standard it is to release, uh, announce games way too early. Oh, you're done, Zira? Because, and, and there's actual financial reasons for doing it, but there's stupid financial reasons that I don't agree with. Like, imagine if for a moment, if I had to announce to you stuff to make sure that you know that I'm doing stuff so that you don't lose interest or investment in me and stop funding me. And that's it's pretty much the equivalent of what's going on there. I don't know. I don't know if you're really working on anything. You better tell us what you're working on. And once upon a time, and this is actually a very long time ago, those announcements used to just be for the shareholders. And then the problem is shareholders are public affairs. So, eventually it just kind of drifted into them just doing the announcement publicly. Because at that point, you know, whatever, right? And it just sort of drifted into industry standard to announce things way too damn early because they need to be proving to people that they're actually working on stuff. And it irritates the crap out of me. <laughs> and frankly, it's actually deleterious from a financial perspective in the long run, but let's not get into that. Anyways, I'm going to assume Zero's done. So I received my gift. Yes, I'm wearing it. It was a surprise long in the making, with many, many hours of fretting to get everything just right. Glad to see it realized with great success. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts 4 looks legit. I enjoyed 3 quite a bit. So, at least on the gameplay axis. So I'm, I'm rather looking forward to 4. If you look at the others, they've already taken their leave. They've gone to the last stand to eat. They're at the books... There at the estate. Got it. So go to the three spots. Nope, hang on. First I'm going to thank her. So I'll go this way. Yeah, I kinda like the uh the do the um do the roll quests to diet rather than do the roll quests to get it. I do think that's a good move, personally. By the way, good morning, everyone. Sorry, I'm a little bit woo still, because like I said, I'm fighting something off. There's a giant sponge in my skull right now. It's really irritating. Ah, uh, has the perchance the opportunity to partake of the rainbow pudding. Owing to its striking flavor and somewhat garish opinion, it is quite popular. Indeed, so popular, the last stand stock has been entirely exhausted. I should hope, at the very least, pudding way did sup in this most delectable of desserts. Try as she might, Tatara had no chance of standing between you and a hearty beetle. Don't worry, we saved some for you. Lore! Necrotria Quartet. Okay. Your business with Tatara was finished. I'm literally wearing it. I do like that. My, what a thoughtful surprise. Hmm. Whatever would we do without her? Indeed. And she's right, you know. It hasn't been all doom and gloom. Naturally, Thancred has the giant boiga. Feels like a lifetime ago that Master Louis Soir gathered us together to form the Circle of Knowing. Since then, we have experienced much. But rather than feeling wiser, the more I learn, the more I find my knowledge lacking. Forsooth, as a student, vainly did I believe that I held the secrets of creation in my grasp. Yet that which I had seized was but an insignificant sliver of what awaited in the wider world. Every encounter, 
Every experience hath served to open mine eyes, enlightening and humbling me in equal measure. Even from those whom I called enemies have I learned many a valuable lesson. What will we learn at the edge of the universe, I wonder? See, there's these people called the Omegas people. Ultima Thule, where the bringer of the end makes her nest. I, for one, can't possibly imagine. But whatever awaits us there, we will survive. We must. For her. I mean, you've nothing left to prove to Reen or to Minfilia. <laughs> Is aught the matter? No, it's nothing. I just... Well, lately I find myself surprised at how much I've changed. How much we've all changed. <laughs> we've come far together, and if we have aught to say about it, we'll go further still. Aye, we will avert this calamity and return home. In preparation for which, we must give thought to what we hope to achieve after the proverbial dust is settled. I recommend food. What with the primals and Asians all but dealt with, I suppose we'll need to look for new hobbies. In all seriousness, though. In uniting to overcome a common foe, the disparate peoples of the world have found a way forward together. It's a truly gratifying sight to see. Indeed. Though it was many years in the making, we have successfully set in motion the gears of fundamental change. With this, we have fulfilled our humble role as a symbol of hope. And I dare say it is time to bow out. After all, there is no shortage of hands to bear the torch in our stead. You know, I never really considered I might live long enough to see an after. But even if my time as a scion came to an end, I don't expect that much will change. Traveling the world, going wherever the wind blows, lending a hand to those in need. A journey for journey's sake, it doth suit thee well. I must confess I too have yearned to see more of the world. If thou art amenable to the suggestion, I would accompany thee. Mine ability to affect an air of normalcy through artful disguise is much improved, thou must concede. Aye, well, improvement is relative. You still look suspicious no matter what you wear. What of you, Ishtola? Any grand plans? Why, continue my quest for knowledge, naturally. To begin with, I wish to know the state of the reflections. To which end, I must find a means to travel between worlds. I mean, dimensions more accurately, but yeah. Tis the least I must do if I am to keep my promise. Yeah, yeah, you'll go be with your boyfriend. <laughs> Should my pursuits prove unduly arduous, I won't hesitate to call on you. And in return, I will take you to see Reen one day. I'm sure you cannot wait to see the fine young woman she has become. <laughs> Spare me. And what of thee? What wouldst thou pursue at duty's end? Well, there's this place called Quadrata.
Here's yours. My apologies for the wait. That's all good, thank you. Well, shall we make a toast? We don't even get a chance to answer. To victory. To our comrades. To the future of the star. Leaving so soon, I suppose it's better the best if you'd rather not explore the bottom of a bottle with Urian J. I I dare say the others would welcome your company as well, if you can find them, that is. In any case, as long as you make the most of your time, they're not as old it matters. I say, Law, whence came this simulacrum that standeth beside thee? Urian J apparently cannot hold his liquor. I see falsely. But your stolen thankrid but moments ago employed the self-same doubling magic. All right, then. Keep thy secrets. Buddy, we need, we, we need to have a talk. I'm always counting your friends to help maintain perspective. A pity mine takes a perverse pleasure in it. I'd like to think I give as good as I get, though I'd fare better with the occasional assist from a consummate nodder. But all in good fun. I won't have it any other way. Slash nod. We'll remain here a while longer. Or at least until Orion J finds his legs again. Someone took my legs! Where's my legs? Uh, okay, so now we've got... Except that one's Alpha now. We'll go to Alpha now next. Ah! That's the only target my sister. Dost thou takest me for a fool? Thine perverse magic shall not... Honk! Take a drink. Humanization asked about Kingdom Hearts. Need to stay hydrated, especially today. Sick. Hey, it's Pudding Way. What are you doing out here? I've come to the studio to stir the ways of pudding, but alas, my creations don't jiggle as they should yet. But I will persevere! Thank you, Humanization, very much for the sub. If you do know what you want to put that towards, do please let me know. I know, right, Giga Pudding? Could you imagine? Graha is apparently snoring. Dealer's choice. You got it. One moment. But Alize is asleep. How do you sleep sitting up? I mean, I shouldn't say anything. I've slept and played WoW, so. In my defense, that was, like, really, really, really bad. I like that we just sit next to them. Just to enjoy their company while they're sleeping. That's, that's kind of nice. <laughs> Knowing them, they're probably dreaming about the celestial adventures to come. Just as well. They've been running themselves ragged of late. Unlike you and the others, I am a few steps removed from the danger and excitement. The things you all get up to never fail to impress me. But by the same token, I can't help but worry. 
not only for your safety, but, but for your happiness. After everything you've sacrificed, you earned it a thousand times over. From the simple pleasures of tucking into a hearty meal or, or collapsing into a comfortable bed, to the grand triumphs of visiting legendary lands or finding true love, you deserve all the joy in the world. There is so much that life has to offer, so much to be treasured and shared with those we hold dear. So promise me this. Come what may, you won't give up on your own happiness. When you're out there fighting tooth and nail, it's all too easy to forget. But in the end, your passions will be your greatest strength of all. Remember that. feels familiar. Well, it is good to be... Uh, wait! What are you... What am I... Gods, don't tell me I fell asleep. Not that there's any shame in it, but you were sleeping like babies. Oh. How embarrassing. Not a word to anyone. Understood? Not one word. I'm told that sleeping in proper beds of your own choosing is a much more effective way to prepare for battle. I mean, she's got a point, Alize. What were the two of you doing here? I had a few books to return to the library. Thought I'd take care of it while I could. And you? I was just visiting. By the way, in response to Kata's comment about Kingdom Hearts and Disney. Not that I'm trying to change your mind, but I should relate a story I have from when I was much, much, much younger. And my girlfriend had picked up this brand new game called Kingdom Hearts, which is like Final Fantasy mixed with Disney, and I'm like, that's that's never going to work. And I made fun of it for viciously and voraciously. One day, she asked me to help her with a boss fight. Quiz, quiz. How many of you remember which boss fight it was? Because I've said this several times. And uh, anyways, so then the Kingdom Hearts lore run happened. A couple years later. <laughs> and yes, it was the Ursula fight. It's enough reading for one day. As we don't know how long we'll be away. We best return these books before we depart. And eat! I'm famished. Yeah, I just ate. Thanks, though. I was so tired. One moment I was resting my eyes, and the next, I should go get some air. Maybe a quick bout of training, but I'll sleep. I'll sleep when I'm dead. If nothing else, those two seem to be in good spirits. Still, I'll see them back to the annex with some proper rest, even if I have to drag them by the ears. And they both have long ears to be dragged by. That should work out nicely. I mean, the only good section of Kingdom Hearts 2's Little Mermaid thing is the Ursula fight. And I use good in relative terms, but I stand by that statement. Estinian? Surely this isn't the first time you've seen without armor. It is, in fact, the second time I've seen you without your armor. Oh. What 
brings you here? Ah, so you were worried that the Levia household might again be gripped by turmoil. <laughs> All is well, I assure you. In my letters home, I had made mention of Astinian, you see. My mother wished to meet the legend in person, and so we arranged to have a spot of tea together. I wasn't counting the infirmary, because I usually don't think of medical things as counting. That's a real-life thing, not just a game thing. But you're right, of course. Where were you in my hour of need? Fell beasts I can face, but I'm not made for idle chit-chat with lords and ladies. Well, I for one thought you held your own. Mother was the picture of delight. <laughs> I might have been delighted myself, were we in a tavern with more agreeable drink. The thought of fleeing crossed my mind, but what then? I'd never hear the end of it, least of all from Tataru. I'm sorry. It was not my intent to cause you such distress. It's just... It was one of the things I didn't want to leave undone ere we set forth. That's not to say I think we won't be returning. Yet, given what lies ahead, I did not wish to leave for later that which I could do today. After all, tomorrow is never promised. It's fine. Not like I had better things to do. Besides, seeing you with your mother brought back fond memories of my own. Be we rich or poor, family is family. Well, it's past time we were on our way. Wait! Since I left home, I've made a great many mistakes. Mistakes for which I can never make amends. But through it all, you didn't give up on me. To have returned here with you at my side, it means more to me than you know. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart. Forgive me, but it needed to be said. I'm the one who owes you thanks. Were it not for you, I would not be alive today, nor come to terms with Nidhogg's spirit. I am ever grateful. I mean, you were never one to forsake a friend, Alphano. <laughs> no, I'm not. And I'm proud of that. Answer Omega Legion's question. Actually, FF7 is one of the ones that does it worse. But that's probably because FF7 is in many ways a prototype of such a scene. They didn't even do a before the final battle scene in most FFs prior to 7. 9 has a very short one, but a very good one. If you want to see 9s, go look at the very beginning of chapter 13 of the Final Fantasy IX Theater. But actually, the one that's really occurring to me. Other than this one, obviously. 
is one I've already forgotten. I was just thinking about it, and then you mentioned FF7, and then my mind got distracted. I'm really out of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll think of it. I'll think of it in a minute. All that remains is to annex and re return to the annex and give my armor one last polish. I expect Alpha knows better to carry out on those floating things. Mister. Ah, that was it. 15. And 15 is kind of a weird one, because you actually see the 15 pre-battle scene after the final battle. Nevertheless, it is a damned good scene. It's a multiple positive scene. A few of her comrades decided to remain a while in Charlene while making their deliveries. Do you have a capacity in your way here? Actually, what's funny about Dragon Age Origins is Dragon Age Origins is how good or bad the pre-final battle cutscene is is entirely dependent on you. Depending on your choices, that scene can suck. But if you do do it the way I do it, to put it as bluntly as I can, then yeah, that's a really good one. Welcome back, Lore. We have fresh linens. Ooh, fresh linens. Meanwhile, the Royal Menagerie and Alamigo. Hello, Xenos. for so dearly. In that transcendent moment, what was it that I sought in you? Was it that you sought in me? And I didn't give a damn about you, to be blunt. <laughs> and thus it dawns. The Day of Reckoning. Yeah, I was trying to get to the patch content of Stormblood. Give me 4.1, damn it. 3.1 or whatever the hell it is. What's funny is it would be easy to reciprocate him under completely different circumstances. Which I suppose isn't easy. How often have we thus assembled? A couple times. Once or twice. Yeah, imagine for a moment... L let me try and think of a parallel, rather than try to summarize it. Give me a minute to think on it. To combine our knowledge and seek solutions to the problems before us. Back at the Waking Sands, it was all we could do to address the most minor of troubles. Who could have realized what we'd find when we began to look to the sources of the realm's woes? At the Rising Stones, we made great strides and shared many moments. From the joyous to the sorrowful. We've had occasion to call other places home too. Be it Ishgard or Kugane. We were fortunate to find sanctuary wherein we might take stock and continue our fight. I was honored to host this company in the Crystarium, 
to stand with you all as we confronted the truth of the star itself. And now from this place, we go to fight the most important battle of all. The Forum has sent word. The Ark is ready. The Loperates naturally will be commanding the vessel. They will see the eight of you to Ultima Thor. Upon arriving, your objective is to find and vanquish Meteon. As a final formality, the Forum bade me ascertain your resolve. So, are you certain you wish to do this? We are. Then, ere you report to Thalmasane, I leave you with these words. You must triumph. What that means will differ for each of you. To make it back home, or to simply avert doom, or perhaps something else altogether. Yet whatever it is that drives you, I have faith in its power to see you through. So please, triumph. Triumph, as we who remain behind believe you will. Let us be off then. Wait! Both Kryle and I will be there to see you off, but as your receptionist, I feel I need to say this here. It was me all along. Safe journey, all of you. And... Oh, be safe. You too, Tataru. So I figured out a good way to explain it in brief. What I want, what I wanted out of Xenos is Virgil and Dante. What I got was the Courier and Ulysses. I suppose this is where we part ways, for now at least. Would that I had the sage words of wisdom ere you depart. Mayhap the teachings of Galif Baldessian will suffice. Turn not to anger or hatred. Look beyond them and there find true strength. What one sees beyond is open to interpretation, I think, but for me it would be the things I cherish most in life. Things I believe are worth fighting for. Something to consider as you venture into the Sea of Stars. Well, we've been to the moon. But I think it's time to actually go to space. No really style. That's actually also probably better to warp down here. 
I mean, admittedly, I was very specifically thinking of Devil May Cry 5 for the dynamic between the two, but 3 touched on it pretty well as well, so... Although I guess that's not saying much, because those are the only two that really feature Virgil in any substance, but whatever. I stand by it. Also, the song! There is no end to your torment. Xenos was always your father's era. Yeah, someone was like, you know, they're going to want to listen to literally hours of this song. Just hours. Hours and hours. That's a lot of people to talk to. Let's go talk to Omega first. I think that's the best choice. Ah, It is staring intently at the Ark. Yeah, let's keep Omega away from the Ark. Man is said to fear what he does not know, yet you would you adventure into the greatest of unknowns. I say to you, son of man, that you need not fear. So long as man shares a bond with dragon kind, so does he share kinship with the heavens, and our ancient home amidst the stars infinite. I pray you go forth and prove this bond of ours, tempered, tested shall endure unbroken for a thousand, thousand years. First the great exodus, and now this! It seems there's no end to our work. In truth, more than a few gleaners were distressed to learn their earlier efforts were for nothing. There's no easy task convincing them the new plan was for the best, I can tell you that. I can't tell you every man believes this is the wisest course, but I can say that all will be forgiven if you... I can say all will be forgiven if you deliver us from coming dune. And if you don't, at least you won't get an air fill. Because we'll be dead. It's troubling enough that that brute sickard left without warning, leaving me to carry all those cumbersome containers. But that he failed to be present to send you off is absurd. You'd be more deserving of attention at a time like this. So easy. <laughs> it's no easy thing to say, leave the planet to us, but we must and we will. As proud members of the Scions, we have a duty to uphold. We didn't do it so alone. Those dark days when we were driven from the Rising Stones and hunted as traitors are a thing of the past. We have allies in abundance now. Which is to say, you needn't worry about us. Go forth in the knowledge the Scions will labor without rest in your absence. Though our fellow Scions couldn't be here, they wanted me to tell you that no matter what calamity may befall us, they'll never go, and neither should you. No matter how far you go, there will be we will be with you in spirit. No matter how dark it seems, your light will shine and endure. With a revolver! Mistress Kryles tells me your investigation into theories on Akasha and its relation to the foul days has made clear the source of our woes. I am elated to know my work was of benefit, but I could not have shared it with you had you not rescued me from the tower that day. I owe you a great debt, one I may never fully repay, but I shall try nonetheless. Not only through my research, but through my desire to see you succeed, which I believe may influence the Akasha in our favor, small though the effect may be. As long as we have hope, there's a chance we may influence the outcome of this calamity. I mean, literally, yes. That is a truthful statement. We were quite fortunate the Lopret's hyperhopper was based on principles similar to those of etheriology. Integrating it with the Ark's existing systems might well have been impossible otherwise. We may have the Charlian's wealth of knowledge at our disposal, but theirs is technology far beyond anything we've ever studied. You're familiar with teleportation magics, yes? The momentary conversion of the body into ether that it may travel via the life stream from one physical point to the other. The hyperhopper enables transport through similar method, but not one involving the life stream. Rather, it utilizes highly condensed ether to create an ethereal current of its own. The current is exponentially faster and more powerful than the naturally occurring ones to which we are accustomed. So much so, in fact, that ethereal conversion of physical form is not a prerequisite for travel. If you're concerned about side effects such as ethereal sickness, you shouldn't be. You should emerge at your destination hail and hole. In theory. At the very least, I can assure you it's safer than the experimental etherites you used to reach Rudz at Thanks for reminding me of that. 
Lumbrina has been on my mind more often than not of late. How different her life might have been if not for her research into teleportation magics. Perhaps she would have never gained an interest in ethereological studies. But to abandon her work in misplaced guilt for who she could have been would be a disservice to the memory of who she was. Nay, it was because of her we found the resolve to carry on. And now we stand at the edge of a new frontier, with a ship ready to bury you into the distant stars and beyond. This arc is as much her accomplishment as it is ours. I regret nothing. I wasn't expecting quite so many people to be saying off. Yeah, tell me about it. Oh, I can't show them. Damn. This is the pinnacle of ethereal chemistry, a synthesis of modern innovation and the ancient wisdom of Alec. The Ark's engine appears to be capable of condensing ether into quantities I never thought possible. That even Wilson and Blue Eda, who she befriended, attendance is most unexpected, but I am nonetheless heartened by their presence. So this is the ship that'll bear us to Ultima Thule. For somebody to see it off like this seems wholly unnecessary. Still, I'll not begrudge them for wishing us well. Quite the turnout, wouldn't you say? Then again, who wouldn't want to be present for a once-in-a-lifetime event? Which may be very literal, if we fail. I'll send word to the Alliance leaders the very moment the ship takes off. Obviously, it couldn't be here, but I'm sure they'll be cheering you every step of the way. Let's hear what Father has to say. He said the work on the Ark is finished, but you certainly wouldn't know about looking at it. Yeah, it doesn't look any different. The Ark is missing one last but very crucial component before we're ready to take off. It should be arriving very shortly. Don't worry, Omega. I will defeat your people. Or save them. One of the two. All present and accounted for. Good. As you will have heard, the Ark is ready. All that remains is to board and be on your way. Oh, I've seen my fair share of tight schedules, but this was bloody murder. But we did it. We finished the ship. It's safe, fit for purpose, and looks good to boot. Aye, it's a garland through and through. I really don't know what we'd do without you. Thank you for everything. Yeah, we would have died in every expansion, or failed in every expansion without Sid, which is pretty normal for a Sid. Ah. Oh. Don't mention it. Ever since that episode with Omega, I've been toying with the idea of starfaring vessels. And as they say, necessity is the mother of invention. We've learned a lot, let me tell you. In case you're wondering about payment, the ongoing existence of the world ought to do. But feel free to throw in a colorful recounting of your journey on your return. So, have you thought of a name? The Enterprise. Wait, we've done that one. A name? Wasn't everyone just calling it Father's teeny tiny toy boat? Well, seeing as its purpose has changed, I thought a more eloquent name was in order. I suggested as much to Fortuno, who seemed quite amenable to the idea. As you know, this vessel is the culmination of heretofore unprecedented collaboration. And though said collaboration is owed to the Scions, there is another whose noble deeds made our work possible. From a fragment of Dalamud, we obtained not only advanced materials such as refined adamantite, but the knowledge to traverse the stars. And this fragment would not have found its way to us had the Archon Luiswa not fought to protect this world. 
and in so doing, laid down his life. Now that the vessel stands complete, I cannot help but wonder if it was more than mere happenstance. If it was my father's intention to guide us here. No, that was a retcon. I mean, yes, yes. In the hopes that his guidance will see you all safely home. I name the vessel after that self-same fragment of Dalamud he delivered unto us. The Starship Ragnarok. Do you know what that means? Sorry for the wait. I got everyone you asked for, and not a one less. And yes, it is almost assuredly an FF8 reference. Oh, I invited them. The representatives of those tribes with religious inclinations. And yes, Twilight of the Gods, a.k.a. The, the great battle between everything that kills all the gods and resets reality. You've done a fine job of readying the Ragnarok, but for it to take flight, we'll of course need the power of the Mother Crystal. Given its immense size, however, transporting it would be an absolute logistical nightmare, not to mention we'd need to shatter it into tiny shards for feeding to the engines. Just have, like, one of those those drill bits just just shaving off chunks of the crystal and then like a shovel like an old train coal shovel there we go but a brilliant idea came to me we convert the crystal's energy into forms that can transport themselves Thou wouldst employ summoning, or should I say, its precursor, creation magics. Care to explain for our benefit? As you may have witnessed at Bestway's Burrow, the Lopperids are capable of creation magics, which they use to shape the moon's environment. Yet simple though they make it seem, tis a highly advanced and exacting art. To perform it correctly requireth that the wielder holdeth the object in his mind's eye in clearest detail. Hence the ancients' meticulous management of concepts. Drawing upon this art, the Asians conceived of summoning as we know it. A derivative that replaceth the complexity of concepts with the simplicity of zealotry to make manifest a creation. I see. By combining the Loperit's magics and the tribe's faith, we convert the Mother Crystal into primals of purer form and greater obedience. Summoning as it was intended, one might say. Indeed! Indeed! While Hydaelyn gave us the ability to use creation magics, she forbade us from using it to make anything possessed of a soul or similar. She didn't say anything about fulfilling the desires of others, though. So, borrowing our friend's faith, we'll create deities using the Mother Crystal's power and send them to the Ragnarok! I am amused by the idea of just shoveling Ifrit's, plural, hint into the engine, like, come on! And you go, ah! Ah! Am I the only one here concerned about the risk of being turned into a tempered minion? Right, I was getting to that. From what I've read in Charlian tomes, it appears the Asians incorporated an additional nasty element into their summoning method. The fervent desire to assimilate others into one's belief. Beings thus created are instilled with the self-same desire and use their powers to enthrall people, starting with the summoner. In contrast, 
our creation magics. The original and the best, except no substitutes. Don't incorporate any of that rubbish, so there's no risk of tempering. I mean, if the being was on the scale of Zodiac, you might feel a little tug, but I think we'll be safe enough. I will admit that makes perfect sense. Primals only temper because of the flawed method of summoning. Truth be told, I do not understand the intricacies of this plan. But none of us would ever turn our backs on you. When the avatars of our faith ran amok, you intervened without decrying we who birthed them. Where others vilified and suppressed us, you offered understanding and friendship. In gratitude, we will share with you the true expressions of our gods. Not malevolent deities, but benevolent saviors. Alright you lot, we're heading to the ethereal sea. Stay in sight, else you're liable to get lost. Lead the way! May we have a moment? In anticipation of the day man might journey to the stars, we developed these. Pokedexes. Teleportation devices. One for each of you designed to work in tandem. Press the button on one, and in a matter of moments, all eight will activate and send their owners back to the Ragnarok. There is no telling what hazards you may encounter. If you find yourself separated or lost, please do not hesitate to use them. Actually, it totally does, Lanerith, but only because it makes sense and they've kind of built this up, too. They've talked about creation magics for over an expansion now, and the idea that the summonings were literally poisoned creation magics actually makes perfect sense. I mean, what's a good example? Imagine that you're making a really good tea, and you add some arsenic to it, and then it poisons the person who drinks it. If you just remove the arsenic component of the creation, then it's just tea, right? I know, that's a terrible analogy, but I'm tired, so, so bear with me. Be safe, all of you, and come back. You as well. I pray you take care. Looks like everything is in order. So I'll go ahead and board. I should also probably mention that that doesn't mean summoning is safe. It means summoning is safer. Because we can remove the probability of tempering. But what we can't remove is the fact that summoning in general does involve making something that is based on what you think it is. So remember that asshole for the, um, what was that, the melee DPS chain? For the Sahagan, who ended up turning what's his face? Yeah, exactly. Ask. That's great. That's a much better example. Uh, remember that asshole who was like, "Ah, oh, we're all doomed," and I'm going to use the blasphemies as a weapon. Remember that jackass? That jackass is the kind of person who would probably summon something that would still be a danger and still be a threat. You know, if his, his Leviathan would still be a problem. So it's not like summoning is completely safe. It's just safer. A few of my fellows will remain to assist with the summonings, but rest assured, the vessel won't want for competent crewing. And it's more like the exact method of summoning itself was flawed. Again, I go with the arsenic comparison, or the extra line of code. If all you know is that this program that you run makes what you want, and you don't know anything about programming language whatsoever, then you just run the program, right? And that program happens to have a virus in it, and that makes the tempering thing. What happened is we got in contact with some programmers, and they said, Oh, there's a virus in this! And they're just deleting that line of code, and now you can run it. If you are ready, then you should board as well. Go, and Godspeed.
I'm not talking to everyone again. <laughs> Alright, everyone. Wish me well. Go to the moon. Or, I mean, to space. To... I actually have no idea where I'm going at this point, to be completely honest. So, I'm just going to assume I'm going to end up in Quadratum, because that would be very appropriate for today. So, uh... Where is it? There it is. Fairly well. Who's this guy? What is that? Armor. Upon boarding the Ragnarok, several cutscenes will play in sequence. Yeah, I teleport into the Mass Effect 3 ending. No! Why? Looks very Alagon so far. Sleeping way. I hope you have everything, because I can't be bothered turning back. Right then. Make yourselves comfortable. We're setting off in just a moment. You have no chairs for us. In fact, this is actually extremely wasteful space-wise, if you think about it. But then again, this was supposed to be a transport ship, so that makes sense. Shoulder to shoulder, you know? Cram everything in. It's... Incredible. This is Fortuno. Can you hear me? Hi, Jackass. The preparations for the summonings are complete. In accordance with the 14th phase of the plan, we have moved the Ragnarok to the launch site. The gates are open. You may depart when ready. Yeah. As ready as we'll ever be. Let's get going. Oh, come on. The burnt out star's got more fire in its belly. Try it again. With feeling. Let's mosey. Oh, come on. Let me say it. Ah. I'll let Alphano do it. I'll let Alphano do it. Have your moment. Me? But I... No, no. No need to be coy, brother. Do it. And do it well. If you all insist. <clears throat> Onward unto the distant stars and beyond. Ragnarok, engage. Engage! Engage! Oh no, I've said for years that Alpha No is actually the protagonist of this game. I don't even mind that, really. I mean, think about it. Think about his story arc through ARR, mostly the patch content. Sorry, story arcs. Because he's actually been through more than one. So now we get a proper view of the ship. Listen, I just can't believe they're bringing science fiction into Final Fantasy. Like... Why don't we go back to what Final Fantasy's roots are? What Final Fantasy should actually be about? I've actually heard that, by the way. That's where that's coming from. And they're all dead. So you're all being okay with being fuel, right?
I sure hope so, because y'all are fuel. I do actually like the design of the ship. Ah! That I must carry landwalkers into the sky! I cannot imagine a greater indignity! <laughs> do not sulk so! For thy mighty winds exist not only to buffet and batter! Nay, they may serve also to thrust forth with vigor! Such is thy glory, and thus it is an occasion to rejoice! Of course the Lord of the Rebel would be here. Let us rebel! I am Groot? Ah. So long as the wind blows freely, I suppose all is as it should be in creation. <laughs> I will render unto them a storm that they may pierce the firmament and fly free! Yep, everyone into the engines. Into the fuel pods. Actually, fun fact. Did Susano even temper anybody? Like, he didn't really get a chance to. But yeah, I, I, it feels out of his style, really. It's okay, I'm sure the atmosphere can handle a, an ether wormhole. I like that shockwave, it's fine, don't worry about it. And there's a random asteroid for some reason. And, it, and one of the worst missions in the game. Still in one piece? Good. God, that was nauseating. Sleeping way? Report? <laughs> All's well. Fantastic, even. Thanks to the power of those primals, the engines are roaring and we're ripping along. All values are also within protected ranges. Time to destination is eight carrots. Perhaps seven at a pinch. All right. Let's go over some points of caution. Point number one. Um, if you feel your bones start to liquefy, don't panic. We have, we have a pill for that. Our destination, as you know, is Ultima Thule. Lest you wonder, the place is not a star so much as a patch of emptiness. That's the extent of what our equipment could determine, anyway. From what we know of Meteon, she's likely used Dynamis to obfuscate her location. So, in conclusion, we'll only know what's there when we get there. Crew and I will see to it the ship's ready to take off at a moment's notice. We'll support the search as best we can, but it'll be your paws on the ground, assuming there is any. But everything will be fine, I'm sure. Heidelin believes in you, so you ought to believe in yourselves. I mean, we did kill her. Just don't do anything I wouldn't. Like waiting too long to use those portable teleporters of yours. Personally, at the slightest sign of trouble, I'd mash the button to bits, and you should as well. Understood. We promise to be careful. I suggest you brace yourselves. We're about to arrive, and the vessel will shake a good bit. That's eight carrots. Hmm. 
what is this? Something is... Oh, interfering with the equipment. Oh my god, it's Kingdom Hearts. Greetings. 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 Can you hear me? It's her, the bringer of despair. She must be killed. This is Meteon. Oh. Have you met one of my sisters? I don't remember meeting you myself. But I do know that you're from Atheris. Why have you come? All you had to do was wait. I would have delivered to you your ends. We didn't ask for that. I don't understand. All life is destined to end. Why choose to prolong your suffering? Effort, ambition, love. They amount to naught. Happiness, should you find it, is inevitably lost. Stolen away by events beyond your control. There is no logic nor meaning in it. You think there is. Convince yourselves. But it's all a cruel accident. Hang on, Medion. Try this. What's this? It's called a coffee biscuit. This is really good. And averted. Come now. I speak the truth. A truth you would recognize if you looked up at the night sky. Unbroken emptiness. Cold, dark, and silent. Your world, like every other, is but a blemish upon its perfect fabric. Your thing, Exdeath. Life is an anomaly. It is unnatural and cannot continue. The sooner you accept this, the easier it will be. I agree with one of those sentences. Just to be clear, we're not here to argue with you. We know that life is fleeting, and that in the short time we have it, we're not assured happiness. Indeed. I've seen far more sorrow in the eyes of many I've met. I myself have plenty of regrets. And one day they'll die with me. Gone to dust with my good deeds and unfulfilled dreams. But we accept this. That our existence may seem pointless. That sorrow, rage and despair will always dog our heels. And we press on regardless. That is why Hydlin guided us here. In her boundless love for mankind, she has prepared us for this trial. And in her name, we have come for you. Yes, I sense it. A burning passion like unto fury. I know it well. For the same passion once burned in many a star before yours. Suffocated and extinguished now.
There's that despair wave. I... I can't... breathe! You approach the bounds of my ultimate. Where emotions dictate reality. Where resignation and acceptance unite to embrace the end. Where those who yet valiantly cling to life can thrive. Appropriate that Thancred could stay standing through that. Better than most of us. By the fury. Thancred? Meteon is gone as well. Mayhap he awakened first and gave chase. Uh, everyone? It appears we are at our destination. This, this is Ultima Thule. And the Golden Saucer Not theme starts playing. Expect, but I wasn't expecting this. From atmospheric composition to ambient temperatures, all readings are within permissible range. This place is capable of supporting life! No, hang on, hang on. Even better than that. It's, uh, Yuffie's Golden Saucer song. They're all going to the Gold Saucer! We're going, we're going to the Gold Saucer! If that's the case, then Thancred may well have gone on ahead. Let's go and have a look! And yeah, I like that the final boss just went straight for the jugular. Meanwhile, I want the rest of you to perform a full inspection of the ship, as well as a biological scan. So it was that the brave wayfarers arrived at last at Dream's End. In following their path walked, and history written, I am made keenly aware of one truth. Though the curtains may fall again and again, so long as others take the stage, ever shall there be more tales to tell. Then? So, let them bring it to a close, I say. Let the curtains fall upon this, the final chapter in the tale of the star. I, is this a dead star? As I live and breathe, I live and breathe. Well, the environment itself shouldn't kill us. Well then, let us search for Thancred while exploring the area. The ship we leave in your care. I actually disagree with that, Dakota. I can think of two. And only two, admittedly. Kefka's Tower and Ultimatia's Castle, for those wondering. I actually don't like ones all that much. I really don't like twos. Threes is one of the worst. Fours has great music and visuals, but but is pretty much bad on a lot of other gameplay axes. Axes. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I like fives as well. Fives is long, but it's well constructed. So I take that back. So we've got five, six, and, and eight. I've never cared for sevens, and nines is nice on a story axis, but gameplay-wise is actually pretty bad. Tens is awful. Twelves is actually terrible, for different reasons. 
13s I spit upon. And uh, 15s is not. It's just kind of an absent of a final dungeon. So, yeah, no, actually, most FFs tend to have bad final dungeons. Go figure. No, tw well, 12, so 12 actually has two final dungeons, depending on how you think of it. There's either Bahamut, which is three screens, enough said, or the Pharos Lighthouse, which is arguably pretty badly designed and entirely too padding. So both of them suck. It's just, depending on how you qualify it, it sucks in different ways. If Median should strike again with such a roaming force, I honestly don't know how we're to oppose her. Well, you know. We're clearly no match for Median, yet we survive unscathed, but how? It is as Living Waste said, I can breathe well enough, but something about this place feels wrong. I actually like the Black Omen, but I've never reviewed the Black Omen, so I'm not sure how it would hold up on review. There's a dizzying, disorienting feeling about this place, as if I could lose my footing at any moment. We must be careful. Didst thou witness what became of Thancred? So quickly was I overcome by Medion's malevolence, I saw not of their altercation. It's so dark, I can barely see anything. Yeah, it, I'm not saying Omen is a perfect Final Dungeon, I'm just saying it's probably one of the better ones of the bundle. Because you're right, there's a lot of not great... I mean, three, you know. Good lord. I will admit 13 looked cool. I'll actually give it that. That's never been one of 13's problems, if we're being honest with ourselves. But 13's dungeon suffered many of the same problems that 4's did. Looks cool, sounds cool, but... It's as Livingway said, I can breathe well enough, but something about this place feels wrong. I also admit I'm more positively inclined towards the Black Omen than I should be, because it is very lucrative. And, as Russell Lisa points out, you can do it multiple times. And because Chrono Trigger has New Game Plus, and the fact that it has optional content, which you can do after doing the final dungeon, it's actually worth a damn to do the thing final t multiple times and get all that really, really, really nice gear. I can't guarantee it will be of help in these strange surrounds, but I've readied a provisions note in case of emergency. Of course, if you encounter any real danger... Oh yeah, that's true, the Black Omen is also fully optional. I expect you to return to the Ragnarok at once. Yeah, I agree. Tejan's Tower is probably the worst part about the outro to FF13. And that's funny, because it's like two hours before you even hit the final dungeon. Because you gotta do the, the tower, and then you gotta do the return, and then you've gotta do the cityscape dungeon... And then you've got to do the battle, and then you've got a long cutscene, and then you've got another battle, and then you actually hit the final dungeon. I actually don't remember Xenogears' as final dungeon at all. I remember the final boss quite well, but I don't remember the final dungeon. We are fortunate this place can support life, albeit barely, I suspect, given the torpid, stale quality of the air. But never mind that. We must find Thancred. Now you got me thinking. I can think of several Mega Man games that have good final dungeons. I know that there's some disagreement on that, but I stand by my statement. Wily stages tend to be legit. Because the Wily stages, that's... Come on. Shovel Knight has a few good and a few bad, while we're on the subject. Mario games... Several Mario games have some good final dungeons. Bowser's Castles. Hey, look. Flowers? I mean, I'm not trying to sound dismissive, but this really looks like Zen. Uh, more specifically, the Zen in the remaster... Uh, the Black Mesa version we played on stream. It's actually funny, Cashel. I'm sure you know this, but for those of you who haven't heard me say this before, that's that's not an enemy. That's just... Interesting. Um, there are two parts about a game I am most harsh on from a review perspective. Intro and outro. The part of the game you see first and the part you see last. It's why I tend to have more exacting standards for both. 
But it is funny because an inordinate quantity of games fall apart at the outro because of what you just said. You know, several people just don't finish a game or don't get to the end of the game, and so developers tend to deprioritize budget and time for the outro, which is, in my honest opinion, a mistake. These remains have long since turned to ash, yet they remain retain their form. Yep, yep, lots of ashen dragons. Whoa, and living dragons. Oh yeah, FFT's outro was pretty bad, too, while we're on the subject. I actually, I think I've said this before, I forgot how bad FFT's outro got until we did it for the lore run, and it was just like, jeez, please. Yeah, no, exactly, Blake Chaval, you're absolutely right. Mystic Quest had a really good intro and a really good outro, weirdly enough. It's, I, I'm, I'm overstating it. Really good might be too much, but way better than the rest of the game. This is a structure in front of me, yes? A tower of some sort partially melted. The strange twin to fade, it seems our perception of this place is not so different than it should be elsewhere. The world as I used to see it, it feels as though I'm dreaming while awake. It's more than the faded memory that Menedion would have us believe. Yeah, no kidding. As a further addendum, Pen 2, which we all kind of skipped over, has a really bad intro and outro. Which is funny, because the middle parts of Ten Two are probably its best function or its best sections. I mean, I don't like J-pop, but even from a purely gameplay perspective, the intro to FF10 2 is kind of bad. First of all, we have what I can only refer to as the tutorial section, which is not good. And then we go immediately into a mandatory dungeon, which is not good. And then everything after that tends to start to peak up on both gameplay and story. Good lord, this is dark. Yeah, and we also get a face full of Brother for that section, too, so thanks for that. We got J-Pop and Brother right at the intro. Ruins, but of what, I wonder? Perhaps we can find something to help us understand the nature of this place. A relic, an inscription, anything. And by the way, I speak as someone who actually likes Tento. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm making my point. You know, that intro shoved me away from that game hard. And the outro is not exactly good either. The top has been partially melted. Yep. I mean, I can live with J-pop. I can. Because you're right, I don't like it. But that's just whatever, right? Brother is going to be multiple ter negative territory if we ever re-review that game. FF re-review plug. But this hill might afford a better view of the surroundings. A poor decision in hindsight. Besides the light of the ship, all is shrouded in darkness. If Thank was here, I'd never know it. If I can tell we're on the edge of an island, if you can call it that, surrounded by floating debris. Yeah, I keep wondering about that up there. Interesting choice of music while we're on the subject. anything? As I feared, and still no trace of Thancred.
There's nothing but emptiness as far as the eye can see, which unfortunately isn't very far. I can suspect something or something is here. There are times when I sense it drying close, and then a chill washes over me, leaving me exhausted. Leaving me with feelings of death and anguish. Ignore the moving dragon in the background there. I felt it too over by that thing. I'm already like 95% sure what I'm looking at here, but I'm going to stay quiet about it for now. What are you talking about? There's nothing there. Okay. Before we jump into conclusions, maybe we should search elsewhere. Agreed. We've only found more questions when we're in desperate need of answers. It's a fair stretch of terrain from the ship's port side we've yet to explore. I hate to be that guy for the 50th time this expansion, but we don't have time to waste on this. Lore, a word before we join the others. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I wonder exactly how blind Ustola is right now. Listen, Rex, all I'm saying... Actually, it's funny you bring that up. I've had a thought that's been bouncing around my brain for years. Because it started off as a joke and a meme, but the older I get and the more I actually study game design, the more I think that making the freedom point right before the last dungeon is actually a mistake in most games. Because you want the narrative side of things, right? You want there to be the threat and you want there to be something to overcome. But by mere virtue of having that threat there whatever it is, you kind of have an urgency, which makes it weird and strange when you go do side stuff. I mean, I joke about Renoa hanging on for ten minutes, but that's actually bad, if, uh, jokes aside, if you think about it. So yeah, no, I, I kind of agree that you know if I was doing a me remake of FF7, I would probably shove a lot more of the freedom point either earlier or, yeah, as Dakota says, no freedom point. Just have stuff be unlocked much earlier in the game. Chocobo Racing is way over here. And, uh, you know, we have um, access to the Golden Saucer over here and get to this thing over here and get to this side quest over here and so forth and so on. I can't think of specifics, but you get the idea, right? It worked in FF6 because FF6 was pretty precisely constructed to allow for that. Well, it's appropriately eerie, Scion, but I'm not thinking positive-worthy, if that's what you mean. And yeah, Chrono Trigger, ironically, also kind of bypassed this by virtue of being a time travel game. So we technically have however much time we want to, to go save the world. You see them too, don't you? The dragons. Yes, I do. I was glad you were seeing them too. As I thought, their presence is tenuous at best, but there's no mistaking it. No doubt your bond with Midgar Zormer and mine with Needhog is what allows us to perceive them. Could these apparitions be related to the dragons that now live on Aetheris? No, I don't think that's what's going on here. My eye keeps getting drawn back to that over there. Uh, better leave such conjecture to the others. In any case, we must be careful. We may soon find dragons they can see as well. Death and anguish. What happened to them, I wonder? Omega's people happened to them. Which we already know. It is very Malachor 5, although a bit better designed, since Malachor 5 is one of the worst outros in gaming. Like, I, we, I've just made fun of several FF games. None of them have a handle to Malachor 5. That, that whole dungeon was awful. Just, ugh. I know there's a reason for it. It still sucks. Really badly. My sight may have been restored after a fashion, but I fear what I kept I see cannot be trusted. It's as if Median herself has etched these images on my heart. I doubt not such a feat is within her power, given she constructed the sanctuary herself. 
Look there, are those are those ghosts? Where what? Oh, the dragons. Interesting. They have dragon names. That's a good sign. Knights of the Old Republic too. Church of Aldous. It's really my nice to see me. This cannot be possible. Dragons. It's true they're not of a world, but find them in a prison of despair. It seems these dragons have yet to succumb completely to the darkness of this place, meaning the others should see them as well. I'm glad we had that five second dip tidbit there. Dragons? Here? What you see is a memory of a world that once was. A world suffering a slow death whose denizens cried out for the release of Oblivion. What? Their world is dead? It is. Not a single life remains upon that husk floating in the vast emptiness. These creatures are shadow and shade, perpetuated only to suffuse dynamis with their unending lamentations. I'm sorry, you have despair batteries? Our friend Sancred, where is he? A strange question. He is at your side, is he not? Oh yes. He is here, and there, and everywhere within this space. He would tell you himself if he had form to form words. Huh. Such loathing and uncertainty. You don't know why you still exist. In like manner to the Oblivion I sent. I tried to drown out your ether with dynamis. Beginning with this Thancred, who came at me despite being unable to breathe. Such a simple thing, unmaking men. In the blinking of an eye, he was gone. Didn't even have the chance to be transformed. Yet somehow, he managed to leave a slither of himself behind. What you call... the heart? Or perhaps the soul? In his final moment, he... cried out from it. A single word. Survive. <gasps> that wish proved stronger than the despair that ruled him. It overpowered it, causing this space to be remade. That is the difficulty when you create a space that responds to, you know, thoughts and emotions, is that other people's thoughts and emotions can create it too. Into a place you can perceive, and where life can endure. That you draw breath is proof that his soul lives on. For how long, however, remains to be seen. Well then, we should hurry and tend to business. Yeah, I'm with him on this. Huh? It's futile. You will never reach the true me. I told you, emotions dictate reality in this space. Such changes as you might work will not alter in its nature. You may see, but you cannot touch. Walk, but not advance. <clears throat> Meteon holds too much sway here. How do we contend with a foe who can unmake us on a whim? I do not know. 
But Tancred gave his life that we might come this far. We must press on. Agreed. We cannot turn tail here. Not without something to show for our comrade's sacrifice. Right while we're on the subject. My aim was true. I had her. How can we defeat an enemy we can't attack? We just have to reach her. She still exists. We're just not there yet. He can't really be gone, can he? Medion herself said his soul persists, but he's the reason we're still breathing. Yeah, he's not dead. Besides, of this group, he's not the one I would kill. Although, here's a random question. Someone put a gun to your head and said, you have to kill one of these party members during this outro. Who do you pick and why? I understand why the Lopreds were surprised to find this environment could sustain life, but there but for Thancred's sacrifice. It's hard to believe Thancred was able to overcome Medion's will, yet here we are. Would that the price for victory had not been so high. His will was strong enough to reshape Ultima Thule that we might survive, that I might see him again. And his sacrifice must not be wasted. Yeah, Thancred's arc is over, but as weird as it sounds, I wouldn't kill him pretty much because his arc is over. As absolutely bizarre as that sounds, there's no real narrative purpose in killing off someone who has concluded their story purpose. Not unless there's no other good options, and we do have other good options here. Soul without a body, a form of being which we are not wholly unfamiliar. Indeed, for we existed in a similar state when residing in the first. <laughs> the circumstances are more dire than that, tis true, but I choose to believe he is not forever lost to us. Regardless, in sacrifice he has afforded us a chance to prevail. Let us not squander it and ascertain the nature of this realm that we might confront and defeat Meteon. Estinian, Lore, wouldst thou accompany me in speaking with this dragons? Mayhap they can enlighten us. I would ask the rest of you to survey these surrounds. If there is a path that might lead us to our quarry, we must find it. Oh, I'd pick Alphano, by the way. I probably don't even have to explain why. Median said these dragons are shadow and shade from a world whose dead is inside oblivion. As such, they're not like to be amenable to company, let alone conversation, so be careful. Let's split up and gather what knowledge we may. Who would replace him? That's a good question, but my answer would be nobody. I would take the story in different direction after this. That being said, Alize is the obvious pick for our next main protagonist. Since, you know. A visitor, not of this star. Could thy slender hands bring plague to our world? Thy breath extinguished life's feeble flame. Oh, how we would adore thee, alas. With time our flesh shall wither, our souls fade, and so we wait for its inexorable march into oblivion. True thing, Tiamat. If thou art not come to hasten our demise, I bid thee leave us. We crave not companionship, only silence. All the more reason to kill only one of them, Gashel. That being said, and you can go ahead and quote me on this, but if we're in the writer's room and people were arguing for killing off a character here, I'd actually probably argue down from that. For a lot of reasons, but the biggest being, I actually feel it would be a misstep in the narrative at this point. Beyond that distant veil, paradise lost, so glorious, so beautiful. They were proud and noble race, strength embodied. We only know love before they came. Metal monstrosities of black and silver. No bonds of blood did they share, nor conviction did they have to guide them. A crushing defeat. Never have we known such shame. Stilled now are we 
Still now are the winds, though none could fill these wings with burden by... Oh my god. Though none could fill these wings burdened by ignominy, we fly no more, only sink into oblivion. I mean, sacrificing the Warrior of Light narratively would work, but for various gameplay reasons, even I, and I tend to be fine with doing, you know, crazy, insane things with game design, would probably balk for a moment at the thought of killing off the main character. You know, the player character. Ere the metal came, my kin were many and splendid, elegant worms like unto ripples of the water, worms possessed of limbs so powerful as to rend the land in twain. Worms I have long forgotten, faces lost the time. Yeah, in a single player RPG, sure. That's that's something. But in an MMO, yeah, no, that's that's off the table. In pretty much every way that matters. There's no way. Thou art unlike the others. This place ill befits thee. Do not tarry over long. What is that? What I actually meant to no, I haven't attuned the ether yet. This is not our home. To our home came the metal demons of whom life and joy scoured it clean. These are mere bones, and among them do we rest our rings forevermore. Leave us now to our morning travel. You will find no solace here. The telling of my tale alters not its course. If thou knowest, my brethren once ruled the skies. Will our kingdom return? Should I boast I was the first among hunters? And will the comrades I failed live again? Nay. Once I lived, and now I await the coming oblivion. Nothing more. Jesus, it's like the Bajorans, but worse. Sorry, that's a bad joke. I don't mean that. Except, I totally do mean that. Because, like, man up. Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That sounds so unempathetic. You got hit by a conquering power. I get that. That's a thing that happens. Drink not of this spring, tainted are its waters, and thy dainty form hath not the capacity to withstand it. Yeah, that looks like oil to me. So... Yeah, just stop being sad. God! I suppose it is a very dragon response, given what we've seen of them. I mean, Needhog never let that, you know, the death of one person go. <sighs> Thou wouldst bid speak to me? Folly. I observe the lessons of stone. I shall not fly, nor speak, nor roar. Only watch and wait and end. But one sight yet stirreth my blood, tempteth me to raise my voice in lamentation. Amno, the cradle of unsung dragons. No words... No songs are possessed of the weight to describe such tragedy. Go, if that be thy will. I shall remain. Okay. No, I did, Dream Whisperer, and I agree. I mentioned that earlier, too, when I was talking about the timing of Midgris Armor's retreat. Because there's a little bit of bleed over between the retreat and the despair wave first propagating. They led you here as well, did they? It was described to me as a source of their woes and proof of their end. I think I'm beginning to see why. It was a hatching ground, or was. I've seen similar on Etheris. Medgar Sormer's kind must have once lived and thrived in a place such as this. Vitra said his father was driven from their ancestral home by war and strife. This, then, is the fate of those who remained. Let's have a look around. Maybe these eggs have more to tell of what happened here. There's an interesting thought. We know Midkrisormer fled the coming of Omega's people. Was he the only one? Hey. 
dead baby dragon that tried to hatch. Perky liquid. Uh, yep, yeah, okay, that's, that's great, that's great. I thought all the eggs have been ruined. If the dragon that was indeed hatched, there's no sign of it here, or its sire for that matter. We should look for them. You start with the cliff tops, I'll look for the planes. I mean, that would make a bit of sense, Dakota, in its own weird way. If we presume the dimensional layering thing we've all talked about, which at this point is still speculation, admittedly, then. The only place he ever could have landed was the source, because he came from this plane, this dimension. Yeah, he was also specifically drawn to the beacon of Vana, so that's probably relevant. I really don't want to kill a baby dragon. Really would rather not. Is that is that an option? Can I can I just and Yeah, we've seen no evidence that the despair wave has even hit the shards. Which is good, but interesting to think about. Well, time to kill a baby dragon. It's just my life now. I've actually been thinking about that too, Tal Tal Zeratul. And it depends on the exact nature of the dimensional shifting. Because it's entirely possible that if one were to... Let's, let's take a hypothetical. Let's say you're on the first and you make a spaceship and you go up. What happens? One of the possibilities is that you shift back into the prime material plane. Because you leave the bubble of the pocket dimension, which is centered on the source. So you just kind of shift back. But even that has its own problems and difficulties and kind of doesn't quite work for certain perspectives of logic. What actually would make more sense is you start to push out and you would effectively hit the... I'm trying to think how to describe this. Because this is, this is a thing that's that works in some fiction as well. You wouldn't be able to, is the summary. Like, the more you'd get in the ship and you'd go up and up and up and up and up and up and you'd look down and you're actually still back down here. Because you effectively can't physically leave the dimension. So yeah, you just kind of never really actually leave. And yeah, kind of like a video game, actually. But no, it's, it is it is something that's been done in several works of fiction. Because of the dimensional locking, you're just, you're, you are locked there the same way the dimension is locked there. If not, the dimensional planet you're on would just fly free and have nothing to guide it. No sunlight, no gravity, no nothing. So that lock sustains it, but also restricts it. So, and there's another possibility. It's possible, so, think of it like the closer you are to the anchor, which is the source, the more you can interact with the, the physical material plane. But, like, let's say you get in the spaceship and you leave, you're still in your dimension, so the further you get away from that anchor, the less you can interact with the physical plane. Like, imagine watching the sun slowly dim and dim and dim until you can't see it anymore or anything because you're in a you're in space in your dimension where there is no space because the only thing in that dimension is that one planet right so that's another possibility good luck coming back Boisterous howling hath been quieted. By thy hand, I presume. Everything all right? Thought I heard a dragon or something resembling one.
Ah, I see. What happened here? Was that your child? Perhaps. Some eggs with an omnol are indeed mine. If life within one did quicken, the beast thou hast slain may be of my blood. Yet I do not recognize it twisted and malformed as it is. Not a dragon in truth, but a reminder of our failure. A testament to our shame. Explain. They descended from the heavens, cold, heartless machines, and with them rode war and death. With fire and fury, rage and rancor, we gave answer. It was a long and bloody battle, but only the beginning. Untold chaos and destruction swept over the planet. In the end, the invaders were victorious. Yet when they looked upon their prize, they deemed it unfit for requisition. We were abandoned to our ruin. Oh my god, you f You know... I keep ranting about Omega's people, but holy crap! The survivors sought to put away their shame, to rebuild a futile effort. In purest soil replete the ether did we once cultivate nesting grounds, but our lands were barren. Any nags nurtured in such desolation were fated to rot. What few survived to hatch, us, a hatch emerged as abominations. We shall have no new progeny. There are dragons among you capable of journeying to other planets. There, um, there, th that there are. Many would make the attempt, each bearing a clutch of eggs. The richest planets were home to the harshest rulers. The arrival of dragons incited contests for supremacy. When the fires faded, the wars lost and won, they too were reduced to ash and waste. Oh my god! It really was Omega's people! They really did start the domino! They, I, I was like half kidding when I suggested that, whenever I suggested that. That they, that, that they were the one who, who were a conquering power and caused all of the problems a conquering power does on a galactic scale. And here we are. It is the curse of those who seek life to be drawn into conflict, conquer, or to be conquered. A vicious cycle we now choose to break. We tire of conflict, of everything. We await now in sweet, merciful silence. Frequent strife and suffering still as stone. Wait, you claim your time is doomed, but there's another planet. Uh, my font's a little bit weird, but whatever. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Font's getting weirder. Okay, okay. We're all cool. We're all cool. They want only to brood in silence, to be left alone with grief until time comes to an end. The sole reason, reward for senseless bloodshed. A pain I understand it. Wish I did not. The fools we were. But now isn't the time for such thoughts. The others won't hear what we learned. Come. There's side quests here! That's gonna be interesting to do someday. On camera. When I have flying. Um, okay, so... Alright. Servers are down tomorrow. There'll be no stream tomorrow. Good to see you've made it back in one piece. The more I see of this place, the more bewildering it becomes. Did your explosion prove fruitful? Converse with any dragons. Who would like to hear what the dragons had to share with you? Even if it's no different from what they told Orianje, it would have value. I chanced to gain audience with several dragons, and we returned. <laughs> yeah. Though I expect their tales are much more the same as you heard. With any luck, they'll learn something to devise a plan of action. Was you able to establish any meaningful contact with the dragons? And thank you, Gwai here. As always. They wish to escape what they perceive to be the cycle of conflict. Thank you, Lord, the Stidian. As for our part, I believe we are more acutely aware of our confines than before. We started traversing the pe pe perimeter of the island to see if there might be a path leading off. There was none to be found. 
There's no small amount of debris. Could they be enough to serve as a bridge? I considered that, so I tried throwing a stone into a pla to potential platform to judge its integrity, but it never reached its mark. As it crossed an invisible threshold just beyond the boundaries of the island, it vanished, only reappear above me and fall at my feet. I look. There's another possibility for the dimension blocking. I would appear. It would not. Bleh, I would not be too quick to presume what we see outside this space is as it appears. So I return to the Ragnarok and ask the Lopperths to search for a potential path. However, the ship's instruments fail to provide conclusive data on the surrounding area. Until we know more, I think it's too risky to attempt flying to another island. But Median told us before that emotions to take reality might be the key. I'm not sure what emotion might manifest a bridge. Uh, desire to continue rather than desire to stop. Hope instead of despair. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. At present, I, but if it's emotion that governs the island, maybe it's not Medeons, but the dragons that hold us here. See? They tire of conflict and have chosen the path of oblivion to escape it. Or rather, they've chosen no path at all, meaning there's no path for the dragons or anyone on the island to advance. Sound theory? Disheartening though it may be. If that's the case, what recourse do we have? They're not like to be persuaded to help us. Their reasoning is built on a history of turmoil and strife. Without irrefutable proof, the future is not, is not as bleak as they perceive it to be. They have persuasion is not the answer. Let's just kill them! Medion meant to unmake us and then and there on the Ragnarok, and she would have succeeded if not for Thancred's determination. She conceded it was strong enough to overpower the despair that otherwise rules Ultima Thule and reshape it to a degree. Perhaps it can be done again in a like manner by overpowering prevailing emotions. It was Ultima Thule's architect Medion herself against whom Thancred did put himself in a clash of wills. Though I marked no leader among them as such, I had a chance to encounter a dragon possessed of despair more potent than most, potent enough perhaps to dictate the course for others, and thus their domain to follow. He spoke but few words, carefully chosen, the tone and timber alone threatening to rend my heart in twain. Challenging his desire to remain may allow us to alter the island on which we stand. Alas, I fear the vaunted rhetoric available me availed me not against his calcified heart, but maybe one of you will fare better. Yeah, sure. Let me go try to tell someone what hope is. And I shall guide him. All end. They call him in the dragon tongue. Then we'll find him nearby, eyes fixed upon the water. What do we have to lose? Don't say that. Never say that. It goes down from death. Even in this setting. Let me get in my mecha suit to go around the dragons who are conquered by Omega's people. Excuse me, destroyed by Omega's people. <laughs> Be old! I bring you hope! Let me pull up my Omega pet that I think I have. Behold, I bring you hope. Crush it. Behold. I'm beneath your... Whatever. He remaineth as he was when I first approached. Entombed in melancholy. I see. Perhaps I could... I'll handle this. So... Waiting to die like all the others, are you? This... This... Our pride is crushed, our souls corrupted. The winds are stilled. And the heavens offered no comfort. There's nothing left for our kind. 
Our long lives a curse as we await the end. Still as stone we shall become. So you say. Yet your kind has found a new beginning on our star. One of you braved the expanse, bearing with him a clutch of eggs. They and their children now rule our skies, their song heard by all. Our kitten on another planet. And yet, upon thee do I smell the blood of my brethren. Were they drawn into discord and war on their new home? They were. They suffered much, and repaid their suffering in kind. It mattereth not whither we fly. Ever a sanguine or ocean await us. Ever will retribution's wheel turn. And so, on the last of my pride as a dragon, I break free of this wheel. I renounce conflict, exile myself from the other, never again to be touched by the flames of hatred. Had your brethren made the selfsame choice, my family might still be alive. Yet lasting peace does not come to those who simply retreat from conflict. No, you must be willing to confront it. To stare into the face of your foe and see yourself in him. Only then can you break the cycle of torment and tragedy. This lesson a dear friend taught me at the risk of his life. There is no nobility in your penance. You wallow in self-pity. And after everything we've endured, we will not let you stop us. Estinian! Your name and flesh. We tire of war. We tire of turmoil. Dignity tarnished. Crimson stained. Our misery. Our shame. It's too much to bear. Release us from war. From life. I see. This is the emotion that bars our way. <laughs> the rest is up to you. Yeah, I kind of called this. Justinian too. There's a wind. He's opened the way for us. Sacrificed himself to remake this place, like Thancred did. <laughs> oh, Alphano. <sighs> Come, let us follow the wind. It will not lead us astray. He would not.
And I did, Scion, yes. I can see the pattern now. The wind has stayed the fog that covered the island, and the air no longer feels quite so stifling. As by the beating of mighty wings doth wind blow, where dragons may ne'er again touch the sky, he in the shade he bore shall soar free. If I had known this place would claim Astinian too, I... No, it's what had to be done. Must this always be the price paid for safe passage? statement. And thank you, Spartan. As always, I will put that towards the Bad Batch Season 1. Streamination. Look, the wind. Yeah, I saw it. This is Astinian's doing, I'm sure of it. We should ride the flow, see where it leads. found a way forward for us. The dragons remain trapped within a prison of their own making, lamenting the horrors of war. Yet Astinian knew them better than most. A man of honor and a dear friend willing to fight to the very end for what he believed was right. And he's still fighting, just like Thancred. Their sacrifices are why we can survive, and why we have a chance to stop her. Even in spirit, they're willing to, uh, unwilling to give in to despair, and we mustn't either. Elise's right. We must press on for their sakes. Fain bravery with bold words is a simple matter, but without the strength of will to match, we are powerless against Dynamis. Not less than unshakable conviction will suffice, which makes me question if I'm up to the task. No choice have we but to march onward, lest we squander their noble sacrifices. Though it pains me to say it, we can ill afford to stop and grieve our comrades passing. No, there will be time enough after. We have to keep going. Even if Astinian isn't here to see it, I'm sure Alphano wouldn't want to disappoint him. That's getting much worse. Hang on a second. I want you to see this. There's no, there's no thing for it. Damn. So I don't know if you can read that, but that says roads paved, space bracket, space space bracket. Sacrifice. Uh, hang on. Nope. Still nothing. As you stole an L, as they said, we must continue.
Notice the change in our surroundings? Maybe this is a memory of an altogether different world. It would be prudent to learn more of it then. Tread carefully lest we lose our footing in the sand. That's not disorienting, but at least you can read it now, up there. everywhere. No Star Wars jokes, please. Not for the light emitted by these glyphs, we may have well overlooked this monolith. Another seemingly barren world. For mercy, the air is nowhere as stale, but it's quite dry. And the sand will do, no doubt prove bought with some in the meantime. Thank goodness Gaia is in here. You're worried about my vision? You needn't be. I can still see quite well. Were it not for the violet crystal embedded on the surface, it would appear as normal stone. A curious script hath been etched upon it. Alas, it is not a language in which I am familiar. I cannot say I recognize it either. Nor I. The dragons, from what I recall, preserve their knowledge in song and eschew the written word entirely. So we may assume this is the work of another race, one we have yet to encounter. Medion claimed the dragon's world suffering a slow death, seeking the release of oblivion. What life we find here, like as not, doth wend its way towards similar end. Yeah, he is, apparently. What do you suppose is that over there? Oh, hey, Catastrophe. I'm not sure. It's hard to make out at this distance, but its surface seems to bear the same crystals as this monument. Meaning there's a chance we may find whoever built them both. We should go have a look. But first, I'm going to do one other thing. Just super quick, super quick. For no reason. Ah, fine. I remember myself thinking of how much of the zones would be on the moon when we got there. And I was thinking in several directions of how that could be done or how I would do it. We did have one zone on the moon. That's some. Other one. The catastrophes are called other ones. travelers and this is a most unexpected occurrence um hello there is this your home 
Indeed it is. Ah, forgive me, I'd forgotten. An exchange of introductions is expected when meeting, first meeting one who, with which whom one is unacquainted. When the vibration of local folds was still required to convey our thoughts and intentions, Ia, I believe, was the pronunciation used when referring to our people. Though it's not entirely applicable given our current state, you are welcome to use this appellation. As for nomenclature, to address my individual person, I believe it would be pronounced Kofkug. Yes, Kofkug of the Ia. The kind of beings that hold, communicate intermittently through thought, but never one who, that is wholly without voice. I assume we are presently having this conversation to be the medium of ether, or dynamis, as the space is suffused with vast quantities of it. Fascinating in either case. I gather your response to my presence is positive, then. That is well, for there is something I wish to ask of you. Like yourselves, we Ia are ether-based eye forms. Therefore, it may be surmised that your bodies are compar comparable bio bleh, are of comparable biological composition to those we once possessed. I have a number of queries regarding your subjective perception of the five senses: sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. In total, I have prepared one hundred ninety-eight billion seven hundred twenty-one million one hundred eighty thousand eight hundred twenty-seven. Questions. It's a lot, isn't it? Uh, my apologies. I have omitted a great many details necessary to understand the nature of my request. Though we dispensed with our corporeal vessels a long ago, we have rediscovered a need for flesh and have endeavored to recreate our erstwhile forms. However, all pertinent records have been lost due to the passage of, passage of time. Take, for example, the nervous system. It is well within our power to recreate, but we have no frame of reference for sensations once experienced by our people, which may comprise our compromise our ability to interact with the physical environment. And the reason you need to regain corporeal forms? Why, to bring an end to our existence, of course. Yeah, you saw that coming. The downside of being an energy being. It's a little harder to commit suicide. By the way, this whole section is just suicide for the day, so there you go, YouTube. The need is perhaps too strong a word. It would be a simple matter to unmake ourselves with the etheric sanguinators, but such a death seems inadequate. The traditionalist among us believe a proper death requires an inescapable sense of impermanence in one's final moments. An experience only found within the bodies of flesh. Okay. Getting picky about your suicide. We should like very much to hear of your plans. In exchange, we'll answer any questions you have to the best of our ability. Hmm, such exchange of information would indeed prove useful. Very well. To ensure if efficacious, efficacious exchange, I hereby invite you to our home, the abode of the Ia, where we traditionalists prepare for our demise. I presume your consent to answer questions is indicative of tacit approval of our plans, in which case your cooperation is greatly appreciated. I must caution you, however, the mind, to be mindful of the Ia wandering the desert. Their desires for bodies of flesh can be described as overzealous. Now, if you'll follow me. It's going smoothly. Not that I'm complaining. Even so, we mustn't forget their aim is oblivion, much like the dragons. I fail to see why a civilization so advanced would choose to unmake all they've created. Heat death of the universe. At any rate, we'll find no answers dallying here. Let's be on our way. I mean, oblivion is better than Morrowind, so that makes sense to me. I mean, playing Morrowind again? <laughs> Walk up to an enemy. Miss. 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 <laughs> Miss. Oh, that one hit. Actually, I don't hold that much rancor towards Marlin, but I'm very curious to review it someday, because I don't think it's going to score very well. You know? I mean, even Oblivion, which scored reasonably well, had a lot of negatives. They said there'd be others, but I don't know what I was expecting. We haven't reviewed Skyrim yet. Something tells me we have different definitions of the word abode. They're energy beings! The Isle of Dragons was shrouded in the silence of the dead, yet the stillness here to suggest they are sleeping? 
More violet colored crystals. I cannot place my finger on it, but there's something unsettling about them. I should not be surprised their concept of a village is so different from ours, and yet. Wait, why are they killing Starfleet people for Order 66? They don't have the force. Welcome to our abode. Many of our compeers, you will find, remained idle in domiciles. Uh, though your quizzical expression indicate my phrasing is unclear. I speak, of course, of the violet crystalline stru structures hanging from stone structures. You, may re you say they remain idle, but what of your work to regain corporeal bodies? An astute question, and understandable, given your finite nature. We have no desire to pursue our research, for it's no longer necessary. If in our idleness we are struck by sudden inspiration, we rise to pursue said inspiration to its conclusion. That's why I was still present for your arrival, and why I continue to engage with you even still. But while others are not currently in their motile state, rest assured they would not object were you to disturb their stress bite. You need only cast your thoughts towards one of the crystalline domiciles to communicate. So, real talk for a second. One of the things I dislike most about classic science fiction is the hyper-advanced race concept. It's difficult to explain why, and it would probably take a while. But the long and the short of it is, at a certain point of advancement, things get weird and bad. <laughs> really, really bad. Of course, most classic sci-fi is built on the pre the precept that humanity will continue to advance at a, uh, what do you call it, a logarithmic rate, an increasing rate. Which, consequently, I don't actually agree with, but that's neither here nor there. And yeah, Takoid is correct. Once, once you reach a certain level of advancement, it gets harder and harder to make a story happen. Because any problem you can come up with has so many answers. I'm sure most of you have already noticed this, because I myself, when I'm doing the Trek rewrite, one of the first things I've done is drag the tech level of everything down several notches. Because Star Trek is, even Star Trek, which is more grounded than most, is still too damned advanced. You need to kind of yank it down, you know? Yank it down a few tiers. I mean, compared to the old stuff, like, have you read the Foundation series, Dakota? Or what's the one with, um... Of course, I can't think of any of the names. The Berserkers, I want to say? Ironically, we haven't nerfed the Borg much. Is it the Reavers? And yeah, Dune, Dune sequels is another example of this. Exactly, Blade Traval. We haven't changed the Borg much, because the Borg as is are already ridiculous, but we've depowered everything else. So the Borg are actually more terrifying. No, 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 no. Firefly is not what I would call classic science fiction. Hang on. <sighs> I think it's the Berserkers. Yeah, it is. I'm right. I'm right. Super intelligent Berserker machines created to, to make a doomsday machine. Yada, 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 yada. It's a whole series. From the 60s, specifically. Like I said, I tend to point towards classic sci-fi because classic sci-fi, which is stuff from about the 20s to about the 70s, tends to be way higher tier and way bonkers above what we tend to think of as sci-fi nowadays. Hence why I can say that, yes, Star Trek is relatively grounded compared to that stuff. That's very interesting looking. Forty K? Uh I'm admittedly not an expert on forty K.
Asimov's wasn't super high tier, but at the same time, it kinda was. But I actually literally can't explain why without spoiling, so that's all I'm gonna say. Is I a tune? Easy way to check. I did. You're talking about that thing, right? The, um, the end of the world over there. The most high tier tech I've seen in sci fi. There's this one science fiction story where they use galaxies as ammunition. I think that's probably as high as I've seen. I agree with that sound completely. No, it's extremely dumb. Like I said, I really do think that at a certain point, fiction just kind of goes, woo, and it's like, it's okay. And unless it's a parody, it's just stupid. Now, ironically, Gurren Lagann, which is a parody, does that too. So, I use that very specifically as an example. Did your increase yield satisfactory responses? Sort of. If they fail to answer, it's likely because their minds have been unraveled due to prolonged idleness. They are not but concentrated ether now. Worry not. There are others who have need no need there are no others who have need of these logics, and they will not prove a hindrance to remain as they are. But more importantly, you did say some answered your request, right? I imagine they'll be with us. Yeah, cause... Working on it, silly idea. I had no luck, but everyone else fared well enough. Quite a few Ia have awakened. Ah, there they are. May I introduce to you... These people. Hi. It's been too long, Coot Coot. I dare say Saturn 4 has been complete has since completed an orbit. Indeed, until the travelers brought it to my attention, I had noticed how unraveled some had become. Travelers? Ah, of course, of course. The ones who wish to know why we seek to regain corporeal forms. The truth of the matter is plain to see as my neighboring systems, but my single account would fail to satisfy the requirement for scientific objectivity. Thus I bid them to awaken you. Am I the only one who struggles to tell who's speaking? Thou art not. In the absence of corporeal forms and divergence they afford, mayhap such similarity in voice is unavoidable. By the way, Koof Koof, have you already observed the requisite custom for the travelers? That which one is expected to do in receiving guests, it's a matter of proper form. Ah, yes. So long has it been, it completely escaped my mind. It still does. What was it again? I can't seem to remember. Neither do I. Pity. I was hoping you would. Perhaps we can search the archives for the answer. Come now, Needheek. Our archives have long since been frozen, lest we subject ourselves to further dolor. Surely you recall that much. Ah, of course, food. The custom is to serve food! Beings of flesh such as they must regularly replenish their ether. By contributing to the replenishment, we communicate friendly intention. That's right, that's right. I like these guys. <laughs> we duly invite you to join us in the communal repast, after which we may engage in leisurely conversation. If we have a chance to learn something, I see no reason to decline. You also notice this is yet another breather section. There's a lot of these in this game. Excellent. If you would care to follow, we shall feast you on the purest of ether. I have a feeling you mean that literally. I think they are putting Giga Pudding. Wait a minute, are these your people? That would actually explain a lot. I think I'd forgotten what had become of the archives. How much has my essence deteriorated since last I was awake? Not that I'm averse to having my mind fade away in this manner. It's so unlike the natural degradation of one flesh. How delightful. Oh, by the way. Uh, there you go. There is the new quest name. Oh, 
How much ether would be adequate for your kind, I wonder? As I recall, there's a fine line between optimal satiation and violent sickness. Yeah, flesh abandoned. <laughs> is roughly what that sounds like to me. As I suspect, this then this is so-called feast. Eh, let's see for it for ourselves. Fear not, we're like, we're like as not to come into harm. Everyone, just go stand in the middle of these these things over here. It'll be fine! If they are thus able to replenish their ether, the loss of vital sustenance isn't likely to be the cause of their demise. Oh, to be clear, I very disagree with them, but then again, I'm not a nihilist. Ether, they said, but I can't help but feel a bit nervous. Judging by the construction of this facility, it would seem the EF draw directly upon ether. We were told to stand wherever we like. This strikes me as less of a meal and more a ritual. Yeah, you stole, You were told to stand wherever you like, and all of you stood in the middle of the patterns. Reminds me of the recent XKCD, which is, by the way, a masterclass in game design. In fact, I'm gonna link. I'm gonna link that. This is not a joke. I need to bookmark this because this is literally good game design. In a freaking webcomic. Here it is, right here. Feel free to look at it, anybody who's curious. I'm not even going to explain it, because that's the point. And here we want to show you... Whoop, whoop, whoop. Sorry, didn't mean to actually put your trigger it. This facility is where we replenish our ether. There's no particular name for it, but we traditionalists sometimes use the word restaurant. Now then, if you would take your place with your comrades, the space will soon be awash with the purest of ether. Please absorb as much as you like. Oh, of course, I'm going to stand in the middle, too. You brace yourself for a rush of sweet, sweet ether, but nothing seems to happen. Maybe you need to wait a little longer. You brace yourself again, but nothing seems to happen. Just as I suspected, as meticulously as one might recreate the EA's home world, this is Ultima Thule. One cannot generate ether here. As recreations, our friends are oblivious to this fact. To the very truth of their existence, much like the phantoms that recreated Amaranth. Of the recreated Amaranth. However, appearances may seem, we must be ever be mindful that of the memories that is the memories of the dead with whom we deal. Yeah. Eh, we'll go with the shooting, Zach out. So did you have your fill of ether? Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> we couldn't absorb it. A deficiency in our forms, it would seem. Oh, very unfortunate. May I ask how you normally replenish your ether? Um, um, um. A good reaction. I mean, if you really think about it, eating is gross. In fact, I recommend nobody think about that because it'll hurt your appetite. Through your mouths, you say. How very primitive and quaint. You think their mouths serve not only to expel sound, but to draw in sustenance. Such life forms have long since vanished from our systems. Though we regrettably could not partake of your magnificent feast, rest assured, we feel your welcome most keenly. In the course of our acquainting ourselves with our sophisticated ways, however, we couldn't help but wonder. Wherefore do you wish to obtain vessels of flesh and thence to vanish? Will you not favor us with an explanation? You flesh and blood beings are always so hasty. It does have its charm, however. Very well, we shall indulge you. In the beginning, when the Ia yet possessed corporeal bodies, our ancestors dedicated themselves to the pursuit of knowledge and technological advancement. By transcending all limitations, we believed we would eliminate sorrow and abide in true happiness. From the tangible, such as land, to the intangible, such as labor, there exist myriad hindrances to progress. But the most confining all of all was flesh itself. Our natural lifespan was distressingly middling, you see. Too short to enjoy unhurried lives, too long to consider disposable. Furthermore, to simply maintain the integrity of our bodies demanded considerable resources. It's true. We managed to solve this problem. After long years, we discovered how to become non-corporeal entities with everlasting lives untroubled by the failures of the flesh. Woo! Mission accomplished! Thus changed, we had more time and freedom to continue our scientific pursuits. 
We wanted to make ever greater strides in our quest to transcend all limitation until we came to the challenge, last challenge of them all, the limit of knowledge. That is to say, deciphering the laws of creation. We sought to discover how the universe came into being and explain all extant phenomena, and thus predict the future. We found some picture of a guy named Yoshi P. Not sure what that is. If we could but achieve this, we believe they would be free from uncertainty and anxiety. And did you find the answers you sought? Yes, we did. Our efforts revealed just a fundamental truth. The heat death of the universe. I'm just, I, just, I already called this. Knowledge of said truth is essential for the continuation of our conversation. If you'd like to learn more, we will share it with you. No, we mustn't. Primitive as they are, they would, it would be unspeakably cruel to deprive them of their ignorance. They are possessed of corporeal forms. Their lives readily ended. And it's those who have gone before. Is it not our duty to warn them? What thinkest thou? We have deliberated and come to consensus. If you're resolved to know it, we will disclose to you the truth we discovered, the truth of the universe. Seek us at the stone pillars just outside the bounds of the abode, a place called Elegia. Elegia, actually, but whatever. It is true that a lack of knowledge can beget fear. Therefore, in theory, by acquiring all knowledge, it may be possible to attain peace. But as Heidelin told us, all those people who attempted to free the worlds from life's woes met with failure. And the ear are among them, as their presence here is yes. Oh, God! The tale we are about to hear will not be a happy one. Really? You may be intimately familiar with the problem, though like the back of your hand, you'd be powerless to solve it. In the course of my struggles, I've often been made keenly aware of this fact. I wonder, have the ear never felt the same frustration? To define the laws of creation would have been no small feat, even for the Ia. Nay, having eternal life and hence no sense of taste, haste would have only made it harder. Such tremendous drive for knowledge they once had, and I struggled to reconcile with the list that's being before us, whatever answers they found did not bring them happiness. Like her master, Yashola seeks the truth of creation. How will the truth of the Ia, who uncovered all those all only to desire the end, fall upon her ears? fundamental truth. We will hear it, of course. Let us learn what has led such an enlightened people to this indolent end. Well, that's another quest thing. Here we joined the ear. There's one trifling matter I would fain investigate. Laura Graha, might I trouble you for your assistance? My thanks. We shall head outside the boat, if thou wilt kindly follow me. I don't know what mischief you're plotting, Rianje, but I trust you have our best interests at heart. Rest of us shall go to the Elegia. Lest you worry, we won't start without you. By the way, I'm imagining it's pronounced Elegia because Elegy, but... Or Elegy, rather. Even though my mind looks at that and says Elegia. But again, what the hell do I know? Hello, Goo Geeves. I'm sorry, did you just speak to me? You see, I haven't spoken to anyone in a very, very long time. Anyway, what do you need? Not that I imagine there's much I can do for you. What do you do here? I am... I uh, was? Wait, where was I? Ah, yes, I was a researcher of sorts, studying the secrets of the universe. But that was very, very, very long ago. Now I'm little more than a detached wisp you see before you. Despairing in my knowledge of the inevitable end, I simply gaze into the void ever in vain. This place has no name as such. If you must call it something, call it the abode of the Ia, for it is where we live. If indeed one can call this tenuous grasp on existence life. A scattered, deluded few of my kind strive to regain some semblance of our former glory. For the enlightened among us know it's all for naught. The end is inevitable. It's only a matter of time. And? Sorry. See, can I go ahead and get real with you for about five seconds? Because I'm not going to dig into this at all. I don't want to invite discussion on this. I just want to admit something. I've already had all these thoughts. I've already done the deep dive, so to speak, on existentialism and reality and heat death the universe, and all that fun stuff. And I've already come up with my answers. 
So that's why I'm able to be both so flippant here, because this doesn't actually bother me. I mean, not that I want to compare myself to Xenos, but this kind of despair thing doesn't hit me like this. Because it can't. That, what, what, what am I looking at? Is that water? That does not look like water. Oh my goodness. A spring. A sizable one. I had noticed it amongst the dunes. Despair water. Glug, glug, glug. Ah, this place shall serve. Is this, is it the spring, is it the spring you wish to investigate? Pray forgive me, friends, there's not to investigate. Ah, it was but a pre pretense to speak in private. You have our undivided attention. As we have established here in Ultima Thule, those denizens of ruined stars are recreated in their twilight days. Yet one question doth arise in my mind. So faithfully formed of the simulacra, they believe themselves yet amongst the living. How dost thou suppose this is possible? Medion made contact with them while they still lived? Of course, she must have visited the Stars of the Dragons and the Ea before either race perished in their entirety. Thus could she make her emotions her own and with them create more faithful simulacra than had she relied on a historical account. So too did I theorize and, upon assumption, consider how those two races might have met their demise. According to thine own tale, Medion perceiveth the emotions of those nearby as her own. A heightened sense of empathy intrinsic to her nature as an intellect. In the course of her starfaring journey, if she encounter beings who strongly desire a cessation of their existence, so she would be powerless before that desire. Even as she possesses the power to grant it, the power of Dynamis. It is my supposition that, overwhelmed by the longing for death, Medion did unleash Dynamis and ushered the dragons and Ea into their doom. You want to die? I got gotcha, you, fam! Of course, such was not always the outcome. Many full stars did she find already lost to ruin. In order to create a terminus, however, the fervent desire for the end is essential. Therefore, should you struggle to find the way forward, pray ask yourselves this. In the place where you stand, whose is the soul that yearneth most desperately for oblivion? Why do you tell us this now? Never again would I betray your trust. This pledge did I make to my comrades. In bringing thee into my confidence, I would remain true to my word. Yeah, we know what you're doing. The pattern's been established. As for thee, let us consider it my fitting reward for the secrets I harbored for the Crystal Ogzark. I once placed my faith in thy chosen path, walking at thy side, full knowing that we were bound for thy demise. I ask now that thou returnest the favor, and abide in faith as I fulfill mine own destiny. If you say my debt has come due, how am I to refuse? It is indelicate, me, uh, indelicate of me, I know full well, and I can but beg thy forgiveness. Yet even if I must needs go to such lengths, I cannot well feign ignorance of the answer I have found within. The answer to the question, in what moment might I stand strongest? After all we've been through, I will say only this. Do what you must. Do what you must and see your conviction through. 
I shall, my friend. I shall. Without further ado, let's join our comrades. It's okay, Orianja is me from the past, so... We know this works out. There wouldn't be any temporal paradox, would there? There. To Elegia. Is it... Hang on, hang on. Is it G or G? Elegy. It is G. Elegia. No, not type 3! No! No! God, no! There's a lot of... Oh, it's a fate. That's why. What the hell is that nonsense? Yeah, the short story is clearly type 3. Which means the game is type 3, which irritates the piss out of me. But the game is also type 1, so whatever. Oh, lots of people love type 3, Leander. It's why it's so damn common. No consequences. Woo! Write whatever you want. That's that's pretty much exactly what pisses me off about type 3. But I can see why people would be allured to it as a writer. Because, you know, you can just write whatever. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to put any work into it. <sighs> type 3 refers to a type of time travel in which every attempt at time travel actually crafts a new timeline. So you're doing this, and then you go back, but you don't actually go back to your timeline. You were in a second, completely segregate timeline. I understand you've taken care of business. We're ready to begin, and so are we. While we waited, some mentioned our star's situation to Ia. Uh, you know what? Actually, hang on. While we're here, really quick. So, you may or may not know that I've actually... Um, gotten... I, I've done way too much study on time travel in fiction, obviously. Not in real life. And so, I can tell you a lot about time travel. It's one of the topics I've actually studied more than most. But to get back into it for just a second, Warcraft actually has a form of Type 3 time travel, but not really. Because Warcraft's setting is actually Type 2 time travel with an asterisk. Uh, there's actually going to be an entire Warcraft episode just discussing this, but I can tell you about it in brief. So let's, let's paint a picture here, shall we? Let's assume that FF14 used Warcraft's time travel rules. So what would have happened is there's the doomed timeline that Garaha te jumped back from, right? So there you go. You jump back from it, and he jumps back, and he creates a new timeline in the doing. The thing is, that timeline is doomed because it's not the main timeline. The second timeline is slowly withering away. Any branches made off of the central trunk timeline cannot last. That's how it's designed. Because what you're effectively doing is creating a bubble in time, which eventually closes, right? Because it's just a bubble. So there is a terminus point. Does that make sense? In other words, that other timeline, is, it is in the one we're in right now, arguably, would be gone. It would have never gone away. Now, the only way this would work is if Garaha's timeline is the branch, but that doesn't track because nobody ever time traveled to create the branch. So, if this was WoW's, or excuse me, if this was Warcraft's time travel, the doomed timeline, the one where the time travel initiated from, is the prime timeline. And this one would be the branch. So I'm glad it's not that particular time travel rules. I understand you've taken care of business. If you're ready to begin, so are we. While we waited, we mentioned our star situation to the Ia. They nodded Sage later, something to that effect. That has nothing to do with anything, Edomi Show. It's just, I'm, I'm explaining how the Warcraft setting works and using FF14 to explain it. But I suppose to answer your question, it is naturally the way it works. Yes, it is. I'm ignoring it, Alex. It is naturally the way it works. There's no one designing it. It's not It's not low-key, right? There's no one crafting a prime timeline. It's just naturally there's a prime timeline. And any attempts at time travel just create a bubble because that's how time travel works. That's the function of it. Make sense? Now, there is another asterisk to that. But I will go... I'm not going to bore you about that right now. I've talked too much about Warcraft today already. So! Don't mind me. Yeah, sure.
Uh. I mean, the only way I can respond to you, Alex, is by disagreeing with you, which I've already done, so I have nothing new to add. I think it's lazy. Moving on. Your companion in front, the one called Yastola, she seems keenest to learn the truth. I pity her. We've prepared for a recounting. To facilitate comprehension, the information will be simplified to match your primitive minds. Oh, you're already here? Your comrade said you'd be late. Apparently your definition of late is different than mine. It seems everyone is accounted for. Shall we then? Yeah, like I said, we disagree. We've disagreed on this a thousand times. There's nothing new to add. You're never going to convince me elsewise, and I'm never going to convince you elsewise. You discovered. Very well. Bear in mind, however, that the purpose of this conversation is not to impart scholarly knowledge, for such requires that you comprehend the subject matter, which you will not. I was not expecting that voice. We will forego the intricacies of our scientific methodology and deal only with the conclusion, the end of our society, and our world. We acknowledge, with regret, that your star is in the midst of the same panic-induced cataclysm that befell Denet III. As such, in order to avoid causing undue distress, we will refrain from explicitly stating how much time you have remaining? That's what I thought. Deneb is actually a real life star. Hmm. You are entirely too kind. I pray you recount your tale as you see fit. In the beginning, the universe was but a tiny particle. Then suddenly, this particle began to expand, having remained entirely in the bounds of your star. The phenomenon may be difficult for your kind to grasp, but this expansion has since continued unabated. Speculating that the universe could not grow indefinitely, we sought to learn what might occur and made a worrying discovery. The stars will continue to spread apart, as will their finite thermal energies. Eventually, all heavenly bodies will grow cold and freeze. No new stars will be born, and the universe will enter onto an eternal ice age. I mean, called it. In hopes of proving that this determination was erroneous, we scrutinized our research from all angles, even as we sought to avert the everlasting winter. Yeah, no, it, I, I, there's no pride there. That was kind of an obvious one. They're super advanced aliens who want to die because they're, there's something that they learned while they're super advanced. We know about the heat death of the universe. The endeavor proved fruitless. So infamously so, in fact, that it became synonymous with vain effort. The universe as we know it would end, and there is no way to prevent it. Now, I, I should probably jump in here. In case those of you are not aware, the heat death of the universe is actually a theory, not a fact. That's important. Just, just keep that in there if it matters. Beneath the weight of this knowledge, our society stagnated. Though we had time still, it was a cold comfort. Why strive for anything when desolation is assured? When our wealth of wisdom, accumulated since the dawning of our kind, would be forever lost. No civilization would rise from our ashes. No scholar recover our knowledge. In silence unbroken, naught would stir. Intellect was once our pride. Overnight, it became our shame. 
Our works, monuments to futility. Immortality, our greatest invention, became a source of suffering. Rather than suffer on, many chose to unmake themselves by means of etheric exsanguinators. Etched upon these stones are the testaments of such souls. Though many left no words at all, thinking it a pointless gesture. Once we have obtained vessels of flesh, we likewise intend to vanish. If you understand this, understand aught of our tale, you will abandon your quest for knowledge. Ignorance truly is bliss. If you would cling to your illusory happiness, remain primitive and pure. It is the only way. <sighs> so that's your story. While I appreciate your advice, I will not heed it. Convinced though you may be of this truth, it is yours and not mine. Indeed, truth, I have ever believed, is in the eye of the beholder. Are you suggesting that we have reached a faulty conclusion? That our science failed us? Hardly. As you yourself said, the subject matter is beyond my comprehension. And that, I accept, is true. I do not possess the knowledge to prove or disprove your conclusion. In my mortal years, I doubt I could even approach the wisdom of the air. But of one thing am I absolutely certain. I would not be happier in ignorance. Ishtola, no! You mustn't! The most important lesson I've learned is that learning isn't simply passing one's eyes over words. Nay, <laughs> it is when understood for oneself that knowledge attains its true value. This is what has sustained me, driven me onward in joy and wonder, in anger and sorrow. The universe may end, and all may be for naught, but I will live as I always have. I will always seek out new knowledge, and no conclusion of yours, no matter how grim, can dampen my desire. I suppose it is only to be expected. Their feeble minds cannot fathom the terrifying gravity of it all. But worry not. We consider it our duty to enlighten you. And we will not stop until you grasp the full extent of our despair. Keep calm and listen well. Though my body will soon dissipate, there may be a way to restore it. Asim's magic. So long as our souls remain, you can use it to summon us back. But you mustn't, for it would mean losing our way forward. This I only reveal so that you can promise not to invoke the magic. I ain't promising nothing. We came here knowing what victory may cost, so press on. Press on. And do not look back. I shall join thee. As subterfuge is not required, thou shalt not suffer for mine absence. 
Briange. My resolve hath never been as strong as thine. Full oft have I wavered in my decisions, and afterwards been stricken with regret. In spite of this, I may still stand with my comrades, supporting them as they attempt the greatest of feats. This truth I have learned in the course of our journey. And many though my shortcomings may be, I may also claim to excel in prophecies. My studies, into which have granted me the flexibility of mind needed to bend this malleable reality. Thus shall I hope that thou mayest have the strength to resist and our comrades the strength to continue. With you to urge us on, how could we possibly fail? What's this? An extinguished civilization? Rekindled? That's right! Our quest doesn't end here! We'll press on! And we will find you! There. That's where you'll find me. Is that... another star? Of the stars we visited, most were already devoid of life. And where there was life still, the inhabitants wished for death. But even death, we learned, isn't truly the end. It is but a part of the cycle of rebirth. Souls return to the star, or in its absence, a larger flow, and eventually they are reborn, alive again, to know suffering anew. True salvation lies not in dying, it lies in not being born. This is the gift I would give to you, to all life on beautiful Atheris. To that end, we created an egg wherein life cannot quicken. That dead sun. Attain it if you can, before your friend's emotions fade away, along with their protection. Yeah, sure thing, Seymour. Never have I felt such emptiness as if a part of me is gone. I'm fine, Mark. Like I said, our quest doesn't end here. Yeah, you remember how I specifically voiced Necron in the FF9 theater in a benevolent matter? Because I thought that was the point and that was my interpretation of the character. Rather than bringing that up for any particular reason. Are you all ready to continue on? Let's make way to that light show. Ishtola and Yuranje have opened the way for us. <sighs> now that quest. Yeah, if you can read that one, go ahead.
I suppose my own interpretation of that would be victory on the path of the lost. In other words, the dead have paved the way to victory. But that's my take. There is a comma in the middle, but I'm going to be honest, I thought that was just more of the nonsense, since there's a lot of brackets and quotes and whatever the, the, the thing is there in the middle, so... Here's a random horrifying thought for you. Have you ever heard of the me rant about how much how wrong the just pull you up by your own bootstraps mentality is? How much I hate it? Well, part of the reason I hate it is because demonstrably at both a microscopic perspective of an individual, a macroscopic perspective of a country, it's been proven many, many times that when you get external help, you tend to get through hard times. That's just kind of life. The reason I bring that up is if you were to break all that down to its components, what you see is bad things happen, but external positivity helps you get through it, right? What do you want to bet that the dragons and the Ea, Ea excuse me, might have pulled out of it if there was an external negativity feeding into them? Some manner of EA device. If our friends awaken it, it should be safe to us to use. Feel it, the ether emanating from the arcane pattern. This is a portal, and no mistake. Yeah, no, like, I, I, it, I mean, first of all, if she had never interacted with them at all, they might have pulled out of it. But more importantly, if she had been a positive feedback loop instead of a negative one, how might that have gone? Oh, this is a fun place. This has got to be Omega's people. Ignoring the obvious visual similarities, those are level checkers over there. Like, that's straight up the same, vis same visual styles as, as the Omega levels. Yeah, no kidding, Evo. By the way, hi, Evo. Sorry. Ah! I'm not sure, Dream Whisper. I admit, the more I see, the more I am wildly curious where they're going with 6.1. As of right now, I have two theories which I will not be sharing with you. But I'm very curious where they're going with 6.1. It's also possible that 6.1 will not actually answer my question. So I suppose that's three theories. Oh, I know, silly idea, but it's a lot easier to understand in layman's terms a positive feedback loop and a negative feedback loop. Even though those are incorrect technically, think about it this way. World War I Germany, negative feedback loop. World War II Germany, positive feedback loop. You are correct, of course, but you can see why I use that terminology. So, attacked as soon as we arrived. Let's find denizens are amenable to conversation. We should also get the lay of the land, see how far we can go. I'll help Alpha know with that. In the meantime, you and Garaha can search for friendly or foe. Not knowing what... <laughs> I mean, the way... I'm not even sure what to call it po in, in technical terms. I suppose that would be a positive, positive feedback loop. Or a negative, positive feedback loop. Not knowing what the locals are, you best take care of yourselves. Mm. Talk to you. We'll, we'll, we'll link up when we finish exploring. Maybe a beneficial positive feedback loop versus a deleterious positive feedback loop. But again, that just gets ridiculous, and that's why I just use the terminology I use. 
I expect the twins will seek the outermost bounds of the isle, so I propose we search the central area. There are machines patrolling here and there. Sentinels in all likelihood. Like those you encounter, they'll most certainly attack any who venture close. So let's avoid them, and look for others that appear more approachable. Yeah, let's be blunt. I imagine most people in chat have had either at least a tangential interaction with what I am calling a negative feedback loop. You know, external negativity being feeded into you, which makes you worse, which makes them worse, which makes you worse, which makes them worse. I've had a girlfriend like that once. I've actually talked about that before because my sister has spent years trying to undo that and she, even as recently as a few weeks ago, expresses irritation when I say something like, you know, I'm an idiot. makes sense. Because I'm not an idiot. But again, even on the macro scale, this is true. I used World War II and World War I as the more obvious examples, but allow me to go ahead and toss out a theory I've had for a while. A lot of people point to the World War I treatment of Germany as a bad thing, for good reason, and mention that World War I was the cause of World War II, because it was. But here's the thing. Here's my theory, my big grand historical theory. You ready for this? It's going to blow your mind. If you've actually studied history at any level, you'll know that the treaty terms which were put upon Germany in the post-World War I environment, while they could be argued to be harsh, it would be more accurate to say that they were normal. Most nations in most wars, when they lost those wars, had terms that bad or worse. It was normalized. Now you might think, what's that mean, Lore? Well, let's look at the several centuries leading up to World War I and how many wars and how much suffering and how many wars lead to other wars lead to other wars lead to other wars in that period of time and you see my point in short of course world war one was going to lead to another major war just like all the others did for the same reasons external negative feedback loop look lorth the machines here do not appear hostile let's see if we can communicate with them Begging your pardon, but we were searching for the denizens of this star. Un oh, that's new. No life forms detected. Assigning generic label. Interplanetary travelers. Greetings and welcome to the planet. The, the planet what? Could you repeat that, please? It appears your organ is unable to process the name in our tongue. It'll be translated yours as Alphatron. Well, I can stop calling them Omega's people. Our people are called the Omicrons. There you go. The Omicrons of Alphatron. The Omicrons. And what is it you do here? We are preparing for war. As we presently do not have a designated target, you have nothing to fear. Should your star become targeted, however, you'll be taken into custody and or terminated. A little frightening, these Omicrons, but they appear to be forthright. I will see what else I can learn from this fellow if you try speaking with the others. I feel like we're about to see another classic science fiction trope here. I forget what it's called, but it's it's the idea of the robots that keep going without purpose, right? Like, you know what I'm talking about. We were made to kill, so we keep killing and killing and killing and killing long after the people who made them go away. It's, it's that thing, right? Yeah, the rogue servitors, exactly. Thank you. I know there's a term for it. Measuring combat capability. Negligible. Subject falls outside targeting parameters. Greetings, traveler. We are the Omicrons, and our ob objective is self-enhancement. In order to achieve this, we venture forth in conquest to acquire combat data and resources. 
Most recently, we succeeded in subjugating the home world of the beings whose strength was said to be without parallel, the dragons. Yet, though the endeavor yielded a wealth of combat data, the star was rendered barren and unable to yield resources. A subsequent costing determined that the losses incurred exceeded the gains. Autonomous weapon deployment complete. Vanguard armament upgrade complete. Munitions levels satisfactory. Combat readiness assessment nominal. Awaiting instructions from Sir. Maintaining state of combat readiness. Greetings, Traveler. When venturing outside the outpost, beware malfunctioning units. They do not heed Sir's commands and indiscriminately attack all non Omicrons. For the avoidance of confusion, be advised that Sir is the alias of Stigma 1. Sir issues instructions to our forces as the foremost of the six strategic matrices that bear the designation Stigma. Not going to make a Mega Man joke here. Let's make sure we have that. Ah, okay. You learned a few things? So did I. Ere we share our findings, maybe we should step outside the outpost. Ah, there you are. We finished surveying the area. This will come as no surprise, but there was no way forward. There were portals like the ones we used to get here, but the ones that worked only sent us to isolated aisles. Ah, then as before, we must look at the embodiment of the emotion that bars the way. What of ourselves? Do you find anyone to speak with? Yourself, excuse me. Well, you see, these are Omegas people. Or a, you know, recreation of them. So the Omicron seek to advance themselves through conquest. Following their camp victory of the dragons, they stand ready for the next campaign, but their leader is yet to issue new companions, and so they wait. In such a place, it, who could it be that fit Arianje's description? A soul yearning for oblivion surpasses all the others. Arianje said this? Uh, yeah, sorry. During my investigation before we joined you in Elegia. Yeah, I'm kind of a Dakota. I'm curious. So that's the way of it. Why can't you just say it to all of us? Even when we know of this place, it's certainly a curious state of affairs. Whilst the dragons and Ea long for death, the Omicrons long for conflict. And as much as they may lead to destruction, it must be considered a distinct desire. In order to find the dominant source of the dominant emotion, maybe we should seek out their leader, the Sir. According to M032, the first Omicron with whom we spoke, there's a console by which we may communicate with it. MO32 also added it would be a pointless exercise, but that in itself, I believe, is worth investigating. Concerning the Omicron's single-minded character, the lack of new orders does seem unusual. I think we should seek out their leader. Pointless exercise. What does that mean, I wonder? Oh, jeez. Okay. So the console we seek lies on the far side of this aisle. Given the nature of the ground, the route may not be entirely as direct as it seems. Let's all watch our step as we make our way. So the name of this quest... Hang on, let me hydrate before I say this one. The name of this quest is... That's the worst thing. There we go. I think that's how I do that one. Any guesses? I admit, I'm kind of coming up blank on that one. That one's just kind of... Yikes. I was thinking bound for the last one, even though that symbol is usually used for an A. Whoops, what am I doing? Okay. Eat the current. Ah. 
Oh, you lived through all that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have that plugin showed uh, for the OBS, so it should be showing up on OBS. Uh, that is to say, up here. I'm not sure if it shows up anywhere else, but it should show up there. Um, just because I'm curious or something. Yeah, that's what I thought. Greetings, sir. Can you hear me? Say something if you can. Awaken. Activate. Password. Well, I tried. The glow which suggests it's still operational, but how would you interact with it? It appears to be the console. But it seems to have Oh, excuse me. Would you care to take a look at it? Yeah, sure. You try touching, smacking, and attuning with the console, but there's no response. No luck, I see. Must be a way to activate it. out of ideas as am I operating such consoles is trying enough but if we can't even activate it you know what's funny is Titus isn't the only FF character to do that uh, selfie does that in FF8 as well if you remember actually so does squall if you pick a certain dialogue option perhaps there is a way First, consider the world that has been recreated here. Its inhabitants were machines who gathered combat data to enhance themselves. And among the many wars they waged, the most notable was that against the dragons. As you've doubtless surmised, I believe this was the homeworld of Omega. Sid built a jamming device to defeat it, a device which generated massive bursts of lightning, its sole weakness. That's all well and good, but what does that... Wait. You're not thinking to strike the console with lightning, are you? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I am. Ask yourselves this. Why would an entity as puissant as Omega not be designed to suppress the effects of lightning? Because it relies upon it, or something akin to it, as a source of energy. My thoughts exactly. And there is a good chance the same is true of the Omicrons and their devices. So, shall I cast caution to the wind and try something reckless and dramatic? With this crew? Uh, uh, it's when the, the we don't have control over the um, Balam Garden. It was the specific scene I was thinking of, Raptor 1. And one of the options you could pick is just try everything. It just starts randomly mashing buttons on the controller. So, um... I could use my custom-made Omega Jammer. That I have, because I've done Omega. Wait, you still have it! Sid and Nero's legendary device which brought low the super weapon Omega! Hey, give me some credit. The actual device was much too big to lug around, so you must only have the control module. And Nero was getting all excited. Never mind. An old-fashioned spell will suffice. It's the eyeball. Remember the eyeball from Omega? Wait, we have questions for you. Of late, no mission orders have been issued. Why not? Has there been some manner of trouble? Reply. The extended operations unit has yet to determine guidelines 
of future science. All strategies are calculated, devised, and fashioned in accordance with set guidelines. In the interim, all citizens are directed to maintain a state of combat readiness. And reply. Awaiting quick. Can you tell us why the Extended Operations Unit hasn't yet determined the guidelines? Unable to comply. Information unavailable or access restricted. I was thinking that too, Sion. In that case, is it possible for us to communicate directly with the unit? Access denied. Unable to establish connection. Is there anything you can tell us? Have there been any abnormalities, like a, a threat to the star or widespread unrest? Reply. Negative. All citizens continue to operate at maximum efficiency. If your operations are suboptimal, please proceed to a maintenance facility for evaluation. Otherwise, stand by to a designated post. End reply. End transmission. Closing connection. I could activate it again, but I doubt it would be productive. What do you think? Yeah, I was wondering if this is Rogue Servitors or a con total conversion. Because both are a thing that are pretty classic sci-fi. If all the Omicrons really were running as efficiently as it claimed, then I doubt they were hoping for life here to end. As this Sir told us, there just haven't been any new instructions and everyone is standing by. Yeah, what's that called? It Stellaris calls it something. Because as, as with most things in... If there's something in sci-fi, it's in Stellaris somewhere. Uh... Is it Driven Assimilators? Hmm. Oh, here we go. Synthetic Dawn. Was the story pack, which added... Robots, yep, yep, yep. Oh, it's not going to say it. Oh, well. You get the idea. You get the idea. Total conversion is what I call it because it's an accurate terminology. <laughs> and thank you, Dean Bedeen. As always. I'll put that towards the messenger. Give me a moment. But yeah, the more I see... I don't think this is Servitors, I think this is Conversion. I think these people are these people. But of course, something went wrong somewhere. Quite possibly the fact that they didn't... Like, Okay, what it feels like to me right now is that the, the Omicrons were like, let's become machines, that'll be great, cast off the flesh, woo! But they didn't make the machines advanced enough to really be able to think for themselves or maybe they were just not the kind of people who thought for themselves anyways. So they've been stuck in a 30 go to 10 ever since they did it. Should be standing by at any rate. If there are those that are neglecting their duties, perhaps we can glean a clue from them. I propose we take another look around and also try to find the operations unit. And yeah, faulty AI. Yeah, that's that's pretty much exactly what I'm thinking. A series of if if then statements which have been which have been stuck for a while. I mean, it's worth noting all of this is literally a recreation of it, so we're we're all speculating based off of you know data banks of what actually happened. Because none of this is actually here. I think if if that isn't very clear, I'm. If, you know, I saw someone question this earlier. None of this is actually here in the strictest sense of the word. These three areas are recreations by the Medion, excuse me, the Medios, Mediars, whatever, of the of these three planets that she encountered or they encountered. Oh, 
I mean, it's funny because we've actually encountered this exact same problem before when we were speculating on the ancient society based on the Amarat reconstruction. Like, by, ne by necessity, we have to acknowledge we're looking through this, we're looking at this through a lens. Oh, here we are. I see the twins are wasting no time in their inquiries. Let's begin observing the Omicrons. They're supposed to be standing by, so we should look for any that aren't. Okay. normal here. Aha! You! That's no Omicron. It's an Ambistoma! An especially lively one at that. Maybe it's stuck aboard the Ragnarok. There you go. There's our shoe bill. Listen, the timeline can withstand one or two ambistomas. It's got a much larger patrol path than I thought. Yep, there it is. The Omicron wanders ceaselessly as if lacking a clear objective. A couple of times in the MSQ, silly idea. Twice, actually. Once in ARR and once in the lead-up to Stormblood. And Omicron wandering aimlessly. That's a weird music choice. Ah, I see it. Yeah, Emmett Selk is just like, hey, what's up? Do I have to fix everything for you again? Ugh. Fine. Not here, but it definitely came this way. Let's use the portal. Well, let's go through the random portal that has never worked out badly ever. I'm part Mikote now. And Graha is a lot taller. Lambdas look a little bit higher tier than the Deltas. What's this ugly thing? What is your query? Well, I can't talk, so... I found it. What are you doing here?
I am looking at the tree. Quite an unusual specimen. And what's the device attached to it? The tree is sample collected from another star. As it cannot survive in our environment, it requires life support. That is the function of the device. Interesting idea. To go such lengths to sustain it. Is there something special about this tree? Being foreign matter, protocol requires we study it. As this task has been completed, the specimen may be discarded. However, when I behold the tree, I am made to feel as though there is a problem. In order to become strong, we have continued to enhance ourselves. Like we did countless others, we conquered the star whence this tree came. In the last remnant, it is the last remnant of a dead world. There is nothing towards which it may aspire, yet it grows, extends its branches, sprouts leaves, produces seeds. Why does it seek to continue? Why was it made to behave in such a way, and to what end, I do not understand. Yeah, the Omicrons, I've said this before, we've known for a while the Omicrons are, were in galactic level threat. At the very least, an interstellar level threat. I see, out of curiosity, does this pertain to your duty? No, it does not. My apologies, I shall return to my designated post and assume a state of combat readiness. So it was acting outside of orders. I agree completely, Alex. They are... They're, it's like calling Brainiac a conqueror. I hate to reference him again, but it's it's relevant. Perhaps it's simply malfunctioning. By no, these are by no means uncommon. It may also be a unit possessed of the ability to make decisions, one not unlike Sir. I believe this bears further investigation. To endeavor to live on, even if we must depend on forces beyond our control. <laughs> Tell me, Lore. One day when the adventure becomes part of your epic, do you think I will be mentioned in it? Are you frickin' kidding me? Also, I love the second option there. Maybe in a footnote. Jesus Christ. Of course you would. Why wouldn't you be? Got an entire expansion to yourself. Truly really think so. That would be a. I shouldn't say such things till the moment comes to pass. Never mind the embarrassment. Ah, we best get on with our task. Tracking down, sir, and understanding the nature of the emotion which bars our way. Yes, yeah, seriously. We'll carve it into the moon. The name of this quest is Hello World. That's a reference. <laughs> Thank you, speaker, for the sub. Much obliged and appreciate, as always. I will put that down for Kingdom Hearts block. Yeah, it doesn't bode well at all. <clears throat> We should return to the outpost for now. There's no wish to hear about the errant Omicron. Yes, yeah, so the first thing we gotta do is jump off the platform, but only after the second one, not the first one, okay? I think this is faster. Let me just teleport in a realm that technically doesn't exist, which is comprised of emotional recreations. I have given them the short of it, if you care to provide the full account. It appears the two you made a promising discovery. Graha says you found a suspicious Omicron. That's good, because the units were of no help. They all said the same thing to say about the extended operations unit. There's no way to directly arrange a meeting. Thank you, Evo. Still, that served to prove it's business as usual at the outpost. But enough of this. Tell me what you learned. Well, you see. Explain, explain, explain.
an Omicron trying to make sense of the meaning of life. None of the others were even a fraction as philosophical. The unit may well be in a position of leadership, perhaps one of the, those that comprise Sir. As we know, the Omicrons invade other stars and enhance themselves using spoils of conquest. With the technology at their disposal, they should be able to alter their bodies, be it in part or in whole. Setting aside the question of motive, if Sir, for example, wished to have an ordinary Omicron's body, there's no reason why it wouldn't be possible. The problem is how to go about ascertaining if that's what happened. When I attempted to probe further, it promptly ended the conversation. If it is indeed Sir, I doubt it would willingly reveal its true identity. I have an idea. Uh-oh. We use lightning on the console, but much, much stronger. In that moment, should the unit exhibit a reaction, that could suggest it has a connection to Sir. That's part of an idea. Alright, time to limit break three. I'll stand guard in case you draw sentries to the scene. Okay. For my part, I will approach and s uh, your, our suspect and divert its attention. During which time, Lore, I want you to observe it closely for anomalous behavior. I should mention that shortly before you t returned, an Omicron unit appeared from the same direction. Rather than entering the outpost, it headed off towards the console. At first, I assumed it was a unit on patrol, but perhaps... We are errant Omicron. We must seek it out and begin operation at once. I even remember the number. It was 017. New plan. Pause! Oh, excuse me. Hmm. New plan. Yawn, apparently. Jesus. This will work. I'm sure of it. After all, our comrades are watching over us. I'm just tired. Keep it pudding. And under normal circumstances, we'll be cutting off in an hour. So this could be an interesting day of streaming. Because there's no way in hell or heaven above that we're actually going to finish Endwalker in the next hour. We haven't even reached the final boss yet. Hell, I would argue we haven't even reached the final dungeon yet. Even though we're firmly in the outro. Go away. That's going to be interesting timing. But I suppose that'll work out. You. It is you again. What is your query? You are the one that was observing the tree, are you not? Full glad am I to find you again. I have a question for you about the device which sustains the tree. Provided it does not necessitate the disclosure of information, restricted information, very well. I must observe him carefully. Observing very carefully. Yes, yes. Yeah, we also have side content stuff. I'm not really in a hurry. Shakus! I love that. An anomaly, you say? Performing diagnostic error confirmed. Connection to Central Command is suffering from intermittent failures. I must leave at once and present myself for maintenance at the nearest facility, if you will excuse me. What you need, my friend, isn't maintenance, it's to confront the truth! While we spoke, our comrade struck the console used to communicate with Sir. What is, that is the cause of your anomaly. You are connected to Sir, aren't you? Affirmative. To what end? You sought to assert this fact, I do not know, but before we speak further, we must move away from other units. I do not wish for them to know my true identity. Very well. Let's head to the console. Affirmative. Imagine if I had decided to push the WoW block immediately after this, pushing the Elden Ring block probably back by like a month or two. And by, no, yeah, two months, yeah. By the way, tomorrow would have been our two-month mark for starting this run, as I for a thought. 
If not as amiss with the other Omicrons, I dare to hope we found that which prevents our advance. Little jolt works wonders, doesn't it? All that's left is to have Omicron divulge the truth to us. I say two months, but that's not quite accurate. I'm keeping track of like this. We started on February 11th, so the actual number of days is going to be a little bit more variable. Is this the longest run ever? I think we might have actually surpassed the WoW run, but I'm not sure about that because the WoW run was done in two parts, if you remember. This unit struggles to understand why the tree continues to grow despite being destined to die. Also, the WoW run went up to Warlords, and then we had a Legion run. So, like, the but the point is, the only thing in contention for this in terms of length of stream is the WoW run. So, yeah. <clears throat> this unit struggles to understand why the tree continues to grow despite being destined to die. Let us shed light on its doubts, and we might shine the way forward. I've been enjoying the hell out of this, and it has been a wonderfully fascinating insight into game design and just general discussion. As you have surmised, I am part of the shared intelligence of Stinger Now, we've come up with new terminology during this run, including playgrounds, which is something I'm going to start using. It is. was. my charge to determine the optimal path to achieving my prime function. This body had been abandoned by its former owner and lay unused. I took it and abandoned my own, and with it, my duty. May we ask why you did this? From what we gather, it seems to be a personal matter. Our kind did not always work as we do now. Long ago, we possessed fair and feeble bodies. Total conversion. Beleaguered by stronger races, our ancestors took to augmenting their flesh in order to defend themselves. What began with limited parts eventually spread to the whole body, and at last, a means was discovered to convert the mind into data, rendering even the brain obsolete. Such complete mechanical beings were called the Omicrons, and by their might, we came to reign supreme over the star. Even then, we did not feel secure. For we knew that the universe was home to civilizations aside from our own. Civilizations that may be stronger still than us. Oh my god, they're the freaking founders. Rather than risk becoming the subjugated, we chose to become the subjugator. We began our conquest of the stars. But we might acquire the resources and knowledge we needed to reign supreme. We were successful in that endeavor. So powerful did we become, we could lay low even the mighty dragons. But then something unexpected happened. I began experiencing an error. I could no longer determine an optimal path. You were malfunctioning. I performed numerous full system scans, each time finding no issues. Yet the error persisted. It was then that I speculated. What could happen if we grew so powerful as to have no equal? To become stronger was essential to our existence. Our every action has been in service to this objective. But if nothing lies beyond this, can it be truly said that it was essential? Have we been engaging only in wanton destruction? Yes.
you could find no threat to justify your purpose. The Omicrons will never leave this star. They will stand by until the results of energy is spent. For I have no craft to offer them. Then... It is not our place to pass judgment on the deeds of the Omicrons. No, that's my job. Y'all are stupid. And yeah, Omega was simply one... I kept referring to Omega as a missile. And I did that on purpose. And I'm just being proven even more right in that. Omega was a missile. One missile. These guys are ridiculous. But surely, this does not have to spell the end of your people. With your power and knowledge, the possibilities are endless. Why not seek out a new purpose? That is impossible. In the beginning, we have a higher purpose than our pursuit of power. And we must study it when we so irrevocably altered our fundamental forms. When we cast aside our flesh, so too did we cast aside all that defined us. Nothing remains of whom we once were. I have no aspirations. No longer can I dream. The vital spark is lost. Lost amidst circuitry and code and commands. What's funny is I'm going to hold firm to the theory I mentioned earlier, that the conversion process wasn't 100% complete, or 100% accurate, or however you want to think of that. In short, that they are not true AI, that they are not truly sentient sapient beings, but they are limited. VI, as I usually refer to it as. Because that's exactly what they're sounding like. Yeah, imperfect <sighs> upload, exactly. I believe I know how to overcome this despair. The words are ready in my mind, but ere I speak them... I want you to make me a promise. Enough with the promise. I'm not promising Jack. Even to you, little brother. Be it across time or space, our promises have always connected us. And so I ask that you indulge me once more. That this won't be the end. Oh, well I promise that. 6.1's coming in a few days, so... <sighs> you say it, I'll do it. Is that so? In that case, I won't hold back. First, I want to visit Ishgard with you, properly. We scarcely had time to look around last time. I should like it very much if you could show me the sights. I've got a nice warm home where my adopted father would be more than willing to bring you in. And, oh my god, you've got to try out the tea. Next, you must regale me with your greatest adventures in the places where you live them, if possible. Well, I can fly and teleport, so yeah, done. I may have read about all your deeds, but there is no substitute for a first-hand account. Let me tell you the time I spent five hours in POTD. And last but not least, a new adventure together, unlike any we've experienced before. Uh... We'll travel the lands, cross the seas, and take to the skies upon the eternal wind, and it will be marvelous. It will. I don't think we're gonna top this, Graha. But we'll do something new.
We will do. I'm oh, sorry. When we awaken each morning, how can we prove that we're the same individual who retired the night before? Ugh, not this argument. Tell you what, hang on. I figured out something, Garaha. There is one thing that I've never done before. It'll be a brand new adventure. It's called Eureka. Through the remembrance of past events, we might say. We have our memories. Yet there are times when we forget or recall incorrectly. What of our bodies, then? It is the same one, we might say. Yet, technically speaking, as living beings, our bodies are constantly changing. It will never be as it was at an earlier point in time. Our souls are no more immutable. On our star, people are known to inherit the souls of others, yet they are decidedly different beings. For my part, I've subjected my totality to much and more. I've made my body into an extension of a tower, blended my soul and memories with those of another self. And each time I would ask myself, what is it that makes me, me? I am able to determine an answer. No. But that doesn't mean I'm confused. It simply means I'm the same as everyone else. So I posit this. Who we were need not prescribe what we now hold in our hearts. Whatever came before, what matters most is the present. For me, that is being here with my friends, full proud of how much we've grown together. So I urge you to not give up. Heed your heart's desire and hope that the future you long for shall be realized. I too have struggled to find the courage to express and embrace my wants. If you like, I will tell you a tale. A tale of a world on the brink. Of a people who never gave up on the future. Of a man who realized his grandest dreams and then awakened to a grander reality. Medion interfering, I don't think. Remember, all of these are recreation. What we're doing is we're getting rid of the the recreation and cutting to the heart of the the entity, if you will. leveled up again. Keeps doing that. Of course, now it has lyrics, so it's also leveled down, but that's unrelated. A crystalline path. Of course. They all leave so easily, as if it's nothing. How do they think we feel? Next time we meet, I'll, I'll give him such a flick, it'll be just a start. Fools. All of them fools. The next quest is called Forge Ahead. 
The crystalline path Graha has paved for us. Difficult as it is, we must carry on for our friends and all who await it in their faith. So come, let's seek the path's beginning. It appears near the outpost. As a quick aside, and as always, I don't want to know to even respond to this, but it occurs to me that if we are able to not just destroy, but redesign Medion, that instead of a despair wave, we might actually be able to posit a hope wave across the cosmos, which would go back to what I mentioned earlier about helping other people out, just on a grand scale. Let it break me. Don't worry. I never have. I never will. This is the time for the break? Because, yeah, it's I've got about half an hour-ish left here. So, okay. We'll do it here, then. When I say break, I mean I'll see you Tuesday, by the way. Just to be very clear about that. There will be no second shift on Sundays. There never is. And there's no stream tomorrow because the servers are down for the entire day. So I need to know the cutoff point. I see some people waffling in chat. I trust Eric's judgment on this one, and I see a few people leaning that way, so... Alright. We'll go ahead and pause here. This works. So, I will see uh, all of you Tuesday for the continuation, and where we will hopefully not have people jumping in saying, What are you doing 6.1 all the time? Uh, and otherwise, I guess I don't have anything else to add to that.